And had your father shown any signs of being suicidal before this? What does that even mean? How does a person show that they're suicidal? Been particularly morose, had a bad break with the business. No, none of that. That's what I've been telling you. It doesn't make any sense. My father wouldn't kill himself. Not ever. We found a gun in his hand, son. Of course we'll run ballistics, it's protocol, but preliminary investigation looks like the trajectory- Do you have a father, officer? I don't see what that has to do with- Think about how you would feel if I came into your house and started throwing around cold clinical words like trajectory and protocol. I doubt you'd feel very positive towards me. Your point? My father is dead. My mother- ugh, You've seen the state she's in. I'm practically parentless in a split second. If you're not going to listen when I tell you that this is not how it should be, not at all logical, I'd invite you to get the hell out of my house. I'm just doing my job, Mr. Prince. Then go do it somewhere else. I did. Did what? Have a father. He's dead, just like yours. Same method, gun to the head. My husband and I were the ones who found him. I'm sorry for your loss. Don't be. He was a bastard. But maybe think before you speak harshly. It's a lesson you'd better learn sooner rather than later if you're going to take over your father's business. Which, as his only son, I assume you will? I would assume so, yes. So if it wasn't suicide, and you stand to gain a fortune... I don't think I like what you're implying. You don't have to like it. No, I don't. So I'll say it again. Get out of my house. Sure. But keep in mind, if I've thought of it this quickly, it won't be long before it starts to occur to others. I'm not a murderer. We'll see. Good night, Mr. Prince. Good night, officer. <laughs> I understand this is hard for you, Mrs. Prince, but I do need you to answer these few questions for me. <laughs> I'll... I'll try. Thank you. Now you and the deceit. <laughs> You and your husband were married for nearly 30 years, is that right? Uh, yes. And did you suspect he might be depressed at any point during that time? No! No, I... <laughs> he wouldn't. He would never. Not my... Oh, where's Hamlet? Where is my son? I need to see my son. He's just inside, but please, Mrs. <laughs> Prince, just a few more questions. Excuse me, officer, can I ask what you're so intent on badgering my client over? Excuse me, this is a police investigation. Oh, Marcellus. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God you're here. Set it right. You must set it right. Thank God it's all wrong. <laughs> I'll do my best, Gertrude. And who are you? And why are you interrupting? Marcellus, I represent the Prince family. Anything you want to ask my clients must be done in my presence. Am I right in assuming you've already been interrogating Gertrude? I'd hardly call it interrogating. All the same, this interview is now over. Any further questions you have can be directed through my office. And here's my card. I don't think you people understand quite what's going on here. I'm trying to help you. Stonewalling me at every turn will not help you find out what happened here, and in fact will only make me suspicious. Uh, suspicious of what, might I ask? That's the question, isn't it? I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. I'm here to protect the interests of Mrs. Prince and her son, which right now means helping them through the shock of a sudden loss. I'm sorry if this interferes with your prerogatives, but... Answering morbid questions is hardly what is needed right now. I understand that, and yet- And yet, respectfully, 
Well, officer, my clients are done speaking with police for the time being. I'll be happy to assist you in any way possible. <laughs> There's not much place for me to argue, is there? No, there isn't, officer. In that case, good night. You'll be hearing from me. Good night. Gertrude, let's get you inside and cleaned up. Damn rich people. Hamlet. Hamlet, it's time to go. He didn't kill himself, Horatio. There's no way. My father, he loved my mother. He loved me. But he also loved himself. He wouldn't destroy something he loved. Hamlet. I'm not ready. It's pouring rain, Ham. You're gonna catch a chill and we're missing the wake. So go. Get out of the rain. But I'm not leaving. Fine. Feely, wait. Don't go yet. Um, uh, I know suicide doesn't sit right with you. You've told us. We know. We're not ignoring you. Hal, you showed me your dad's appointment book. You had a packed week coming up. But you never know what's going on behind the scenes. If the police say it was suicide... Then the police are wrong. The man they sent out was a bastard and a half. And you say you're listening to me, but you're not. Listen with your brain, not just your ears. Think. Don't just get dragged along with what everyone else says. I know my father. Probably better than anyone else on this planet. Me telling you that he didn't kill himself is just as good as my father himself saying it. We... We were like one person in two separate bodies. We thought the same. Felt the same spoke the same. There's a reason he's dead, and his own hand damn well isn't it. What are we supposed to do, Hamlet? I have been listening. I've been listening to every word you've said since he died. But it's in direct contradiction to every official version out there. If we're talking about understanding, then you also need to understand that Horatio and I are in a pretty confusing position ourselves. I want more than anything to believe you... But it's hard. You're right. We know grief can rattle people, make them act irrationally and emotionally. Stress, too, has that effect. And I'm nothing if not stressed. But I'm asking you as friends to please believe me. Suspend your disbelief, even for a moment. What I'm saying isn't impossible. In fact, it's rational. My father ran one of the largest business empires in the continental United States. He was CEO and largest shareholder, so he basically was Denmark Inc. Take him out, and that's a lot of power up for grabs. It's not insane to think that's what happened here. People have been killed for far less. You think he was murdered? What do you think I mean every time I say it wasn't suicide? An accident? I don't know, but that's a big accusation to throw around. Which is why I'm only throwing it around with people I trust. I can trust you, right? Absolutely. Feely? Of course. But what are we supposed to do with this? If your father was murdered, we have no way to prove it. Just your word in his double-booked appointment calendar. You could hire a private investigator. Can't. Accounts are frozen until the will is read. I'll put it on my American Express. I'm not a charity case, Ophelia. But you could be. The offer stands. What about us? We could do some digging. Probably not very effectively, but getting a hold of that calendar would be a start. I was hoping one of you would come to that conclusion. I'm ready to go to the wake now. Ugh, 
Look at them. Vultures, all of them. Little harsh. Not really. Bet you 20, they're all talking about the will, discussing who will get what so they can start getting cozy with the main recipient ahead of time. You two are as cynical as hell. You can be rich, or you can have a positive outlook on humanity. Never both. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Incoming asshole at three o'clock. Oh, great. He's here. You finally made it. Father's been looking everywhere for you, and people have started to talk. <laughs> and I'm sure they'll do so even more now that you've turned up with the help. Good to see you again, too, Larry. Ugh. Father this, father that. Just say dad like the rest of us. Or are you too good for such plebeian language now? And seriously, for the last time, Horatio is not the help. Just because he got a job at Denmark doesn't make him a lackey. Not sure why I'd expect you to understand the concept of having a friend, but... Stop that, Ophelia. Sarcasm doesn't become you. Just like that mustache doesn't become you. Look, piss off, Laertes, and tell Dad I'll find him when I well and good have time. But right now, I'm supporting my friend. Got it? Would you like me to pass that on verbatim? Actually, I think I would. I'm sure he'll be delighted. Horatio, keep my sister out of trouble, and there's a tip in it for you. I'm not Feely's keeper, and I don't need your money. Do either of you see my mother anywhere? Maybe she went upstairs? With all the love possible, she didn't look well at the funeral. I wouldn't really expect her to. I suppose there's nothing to do but straighten our ties and brave the rabid horde before us. What about me? What about you? I'm not wearing a tie and I'm not straight. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Only you could pull that joke off at a funeral of all places. I do really love you. Even if it's not in the way we let everyone think. Both of you. You're good friends to me even when I'm angry and snap at you. I don't deserve you. It's not about what you deserve, man. We're here for you. Thank you. Do you know him? No, but that doesn't mean much. Seems like everyone who ever worked with my dad for half a second is here. He's not dressed like a fancy businessman. Get rich enough and you can wear what you want. Like Zuckerberg. I didn't think your dad liked Mark Zuckerberg. Ah, shit, he's coming over here. Let's move. We haven't even made it properly inside yet. Too late. Excuse me, could I trouble you folks to tell me where I might find the man of the house? I suppose that's me. Ah, nice to meet you. I'm... call me Claudius. What can I do for you, Mr. Claudius? That's the thing. I'm not sure exactly how to say this. It's going to sound absurd, no matter how I put it. Oh? I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm your father's brother, which makes me... An uncle. My father was an only child. Thank you for stopping by, but I'm afraid this is a closed service. And life is not actually a soap opera, so nobody's buying what you're selling. That's a fair reaction. I wouldn't blame you for giving me the good old bum's rush, but I'm telling you the truth. Let me prove it to you. How do you propose to do that? Your name is Hamlet Prince. You're 27 years old, and you studied at Wittenberg University in Germany. All of that is on the internet. Your mother's name is Gertrude. She and your father were married 32 years ago in Barcelona. Your grandfather... Again, all on the internet. At the risk of being rude, I need you to leave now. I promise you, I'm telling the truth. Claudius? Claudius, is that you? Dad, now's not really a good time. Polonius, you're still hanging around here? Dad, you know this guy? Not now, Ophelia. How did you hear about this, Claudius? I haven't heard from you in, what, more than 30 years. Oh, closer to 35, I expect. And I never stopped keeping an eye on the family. Even if they didn't want me around, I still cared about their well-being. 
and when I found out that all wasn't well, I figured it was worth the risk of rejection to stop by. How do you know my father? I said not now, Philia. And you have a daughter. She's absolutely lovely. We've very briefly met. Yes, yes, lovely, yes. She's seeing your nephew, you know. A proposal wouldn't surprise me. It would surprise us. Delightful. Excuse me. Sorry to interrupt the reunion happening in my living room. My father had a brother. How come I've never heard of you? And why have you never come here before, if you don't mind my asking? Actually, we do. Answer Horatio's question, too. I'll gladly answer any and all questions you have, Hamlet. Maybe after the wake. Right now, we'll work fine. The wake was just about over, anyway. Uh, I'll go let people know that. Feely? I'll drive Horatio home. Text me if you need anything. A snack, company, a gun. Thank you, but I'm sure I'll be fine. Tell me when you get home safe. Of course. Come straight home. We need to talk, Ophelia. Oh, sir, yes, sir. (laughs) Mr. Claudius? Please, just Claudius. Sure. Claudius. You and I can talk in the kitchen. Try now. Damn, I still hear it. And I still haven't heard it. It's like... Like... Yeah. I know cars are your pet project or whatever, and you definitely know more about them than me. But this time I think you're wrong. Maybe you heard something rattling around inside your own head. What a vote of confidence. Seriously, though, your engine does not sound happy. You don't want to go around driving like that. (sighs) I'm getting myself a beer. You want one? No, thanks. Didn't your dad want you home ASAP anyway? Maybe not a good idea to start drinking if you're gonna drive. Trust me, even if you weren't monkeying around with my car, I'm not going home any earlier than midnight. My dad saying he wants to talk is as good a reason to stay away as a tornado warning. Things at home are that good, huh? Yeah, just stellar. When Laertes was my age, he had a master's degree in a house where he could do whatever he wanted. Me, though, I'm still in my old bedroom upstairs. Went to college, but apparently don't need a master's. Not that I want one. I'd just like to have the option, you know? After a while, it starts to become pretty obvious that this isn't about protection, it's about control. I'm a woman, and my dad thinks that makes me his property, which means I don't get to do anything Laertes did. This sounds so stupid coming out of my mouth. I have a great place to lit food on the table, and I'm still complaining. It's not wrong to want your own life. I just want independence. I appreciate all I have, all my father has done for me, but I also want to do it for myself. It gets stifling. I'd love to go out and get a job, live on my own, but every time I bring it up, I get shut down. He's the one with the only copy of my birth certificate and social security number. Plus, I have no work experience, so easier said than done. Even if I did manage to find a job without all of that, As soon as he or Laertes found out, it would be all over. As long as they can say they provide for me, they have leverage to make me shut up. Things were so much better before, when Laertes and I were close. You met him a few times before then. Before that stick got wedged up his ass. He was one of my best friends. But snap, in a second, that changed. Dad said he wanted Laertes to take over for him eventually, and he was a different person in an instant. A mini-me of our father. And I wasn't good enough company anymore. Wasn't feely anymore. You heard him call me Ophelia. It makes me so angry sometimes. It makes me wish we could just turn back the clock and be feely and Larry again. But then I remember how fast he changed, and I realized... 
that he must have always had it in him to be like that. He always knew how to talk down to me, just chose not to. Look how easy it was to flip that switch. <sighs> Sorry, you don't want to hear all this. I blame the alcohol and the funeral. Damn people for dying and making me have feelings. I get it, if that makes you feel any better. Looking at it from my perspective is a little tricky. If I had your family's money, I'd be over the moon, but that's just a surface level. It's easy not to think about all the stuff that comes with it, the interpersonal stuff. I'll make you a deal. If my dad and Laertes drop dead in a freak accident, you're welcome to the estate. I don't want it. Oh, Jesus. That's a little dark. I'm not saying I want them to die. Just, if they do, you can have their stuff. <laughs> Whatever you say, Fooly. Don't get mad when I take you up on it. You can repay me by fake dating me after Dad gets too pushy about Hamlet proposing. Deal. You still haven't told them, then. The gay thing? Hell no. If they have issues respecting me as a woman, I highly doubt upgrading to lesbian woman would make things any better. I hate to say it, but you're probably right. I don't really care too much. I don't think. I live my real life when I'm not around them anyway. What do you think about Hamlet? In what sense? He's wrecked right now, but I think he'll be fine. I'm not so sure. I've never seen him like this. You've known him longer than me. Has he ever done something like this before? Completely rejected reality as it appears to everyone else and recruited me to join his crusade in finding the quote-unquote truth? Yeah. No. I'm gonna need something stronger if we're gonna keep going with the deep talks. You sure I can't get you anything? It's my house and my booze, so anything you can offer, I already have. Is that a yes or a no? Yeah. You choose something for me. Surprise me. You're gonna regret saying that- Oh my god! Feely? You okay? Horatio? If you dropped a bottle, just buy me another one, I don't care. Horatio! Is that- Looks like Mr. Prince. What? Half his face is gone. Gunshot? Am I going insane? If you are, so am I. He... It, it's just floating there. Do we talk to it? What do we do? I... Okay. There are two options here. No. Three. One. Both insane now. Two, someone is playing a really sick prank. Three. Option two sounds kind of okay. No matter what's going on, the next step is the same. We get Hamlet. If it's a prank, he'll want to know. If it's real, he'll double want to know. And if we're insane... He'll be able to tell us, you're right. Take my keys. Go get him. If he's talking with his new uncle, he's not going to answer his phone. You want me to leave you? Here with it? I've been drinking, so I can't drive and someone's got to keep an eye on it. I suppose. Don't take your eyes off it. Not going to be a problem. Just make it a fast trip, okay? Start from the beginning. Tell me everything. Who you are why you're here, and where you've been. Spare no detail, and trust me, I'll know if you're lying. I'm not going to lie to you. I was your grandparent's second child, born four years after your father. He was always the smart one, getting good grades in school and charming everyone he met. I was a bit rough around the edges, but I tried my best, did whatever I could to keep up. I was loved, and I was cherished, but I was always in second place. My parents never loved me any less for my mediocrity, but I grew to resent being consistently outshone by my brother. When your father went off to Oxford, I came to the States, decided I was going to strike off on my own. 
I started my own business, a little brewery that served only our own house ale. It was my pride and joy for about the first six months. At that point, I realized just how in the red I was running and asked my family for help. They gave it, and I blew through that money too. And the next bailout they gave me. I was too embarrassed to ask them for loan number three. Instead, I went to someone off the mainstream banking circuit. A loan shark, if you will. When I inevitably couldn't pay him back, just like I couldn't pay back my own family, he offered to let me zero out my balance with secrets. I could make back the money he lost on me, he said, in a few weeks, if I'd just give him inside knowledge on the family company, Denmark Inc. Being young and foolish, I thought, what's a little insider trading between friends, and agreed to his terms. I shuffled off home and told my parents and brother that the brewery was finally turning a profit. I told them I planned to sell once I could get a bit more money for it, and after that I could get involved with the business. They were gracious and offered me a job even though I had very little to bring to the table. When I asked to see details on the company before I joined, they gave them, willingly. And just as willingly, I turned around and handed them off to the loan shark. My problems were all solved for about two weeks. I had the loan shark off my back, and I had a job lined up at the company. Then your father dropped by the brewery. We had a few drinks, and when I excused myself for a moment, your father took it upon himself to have a look around. He found evidence of your deal? When I came back, he had my financial ledgers out on the bar and by the look on his face I could tell he'd very easily put two and two together about how I was keeping the place open. He asked me how I paid off the other loan, and trusting him, thinking it would be a secret, safe, between brothers, I told him. I told him about selling company secrets, and what I thought would be a little secret was immediately a huge betrayal. I understand now, of course. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I begged him to keep quiet, but he told our father immediately. Choice, choice words were said, on both sides. Ultimately, my father told me to get out, and I told him I wasn't coming back. I left. Your father called, sent letters, all asking me to come back. I ignored them. I was too proud to apologize, and your grandfather was too hurt to apologize to me first. The longer I stayed gone, the fewer calls and letters I got, until, eventually, they stopped. I heard about your parents' wedding on the news. A friend told me that rich family, the princes, had a baby boy, and he was going to inherit an empire. I didn't come back either of those times. Then, almost a week ago, I read that my brother was dead. And now, when it's too late, I decided it was time to come home. Home? What used to be home. So, my grandfather blighted you off the family tree for your dishonesty. Why should I undo that? Why should I trust you now? Because I'm sorry, and I'm family. I never got to say it to my father or to yours, but I was hoping that saying it to you would at least start to mend a bridge. I'd like to know you, and I'd like you to meet your cousins. Cousins? There's a whole segment of your family that you're missing, and with your father's passing, I wanted to offer my support, my help. I have no doubt you could run your new empire without a helping hand, but... You do not have to. If you'd like a helping hand, mine is always there. It's not my empire. Not yet. Oh? Nobody knows who gets what until the will is read by my father's executor in a few days. I thought the succession was already established. First time hearing of a will. I came here for all the reasons I told you. Family, supporting family, rebuilding connections. 
I learned my lesson about letting money eclipse family ties. I need to talk to my mother about this. Of course. I'm sorry, I haven't met her yet. Was she at the wake? She wasn't feeling up to it. I'm sure she'll be happy to meet you after the shock of what's happened has had time to wear off. I look forward to it. In the meantime, it's probably best if... <sighs> Who the hell is here at 10.30 the night of my father's funeral? Wait here. I'll be right back. Hamlet, man, I'm so sorry to bother you, but it's an emergency. Emergency? Are you... Is Feely okay? Did something happen? I really can't explain it. We're fine, I think. But at my place, there's something you need to see. It can wait, Horatio. I'll come by first thing in the morning. Trust me, it can't wait. Trust me, there's nothing on God's green earth so important that I'm going anywhere but bed tonight. So, good night. It's a ghost. Hamlet, either Philly and I have lost it, or there is an honest-to-God ghost in my garage. What? There's a ghost, and, and I think... I think it's your dad. Let me get this straight. You and Feely saw a ghost. Not just any ghost. The ghost of my father. He appeared to you in your garage. Correct. If you really believe this thing is a ghost, which I still have a hard time believing, why the hell would you leave Feely alone with it? It was her idea. Someone has to watch it. Why? Because I don't know to see what it does. It's weird. Someone should keep watch. If this is some kind of joke... This is no joke. Do you really think this is the kind of thing I would find funny? Telling my best friend that his recently deceased father has appeared as a vision in my garage? God, I don't know if I hope that it's still out there so you believe me, or I hope that it's gone so you don't have to look at it. Oh, so this ghost doesn't look too nice? It looks... dead. Extremely dead. If it's still there, then you gotta be ready. Consider me braced for impact. Good. Because we're here. Oh good, you're here. I think he's about to leave. How can you tell? He's getting all see-through. Barely cloudy at all like he was before. I thought you were supposed to be watching the ghost. I was, until I came out here to tell you to hurry. So hurry. Come here. Hey, let go of my... There. Do you see him? That? Guys, that's steam. Condensation. It's been raining and it's humid as hell. Take a good look where the face would be and tell me that's not a person. Look, it's turning. Look at where it looks like a part of the head. Part of a... Dad? Did you see that? Did you see it turning to face him? It wouldn't look at me no matter what I did, but it's acknowledging him. Shh. Hamlet. Yeah, Dad, it's me. It's Hamlet. C can you hear me? How is this possible? Can... Can you show yourself to me more clearly? That is not something I wish you to see. Please... Dad, I want to see you again. I miss you. I miss you so much. I... I found your body. You can't show me anything I haven't already seen. As you wish. Your... Oh, Christ, your face. The gunshot. Go inside, guys. Are you sure? I'm sure. Uh, go in the house. I'll join you when we're... After we've talked. Be careful. He's my father, Feely. I'm not in any danger. On the contrary, son. You are in a great deal of danger. 
but not from me. The same thing that killed you? You were always so smart, my boy. I knew it. I knew you didn't kill yourself. I've been trying to tell Feely and Horatio, but they didn't want to believe me. But you're here, and you're telling me... Be careful. Your friends have seen you, but tell no one else about your theories. You'll only draw more attention to yourself. But how else am I supposed to solve your murder? If I can't tell people, I can't ask questions. I didn't come back to ask you to avenge me. I came to tell you to let go. I'm dead. No justice or conviction will change that. The only thing to be gained is your safety, and that can only be guaranteed if you leave things be. You really expect me to let your murderer get away? What kind of a son would that make me? A living one. A safe one. Do you know who killed you? No. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. <sighs> it's not for lack of love. More an excess of it. Hate me for asking you not to search. But whatever you do, don't look into this further. Fine. Fine. I won't search. But for me, tell me what you do know. Give me that closure at least. It's not much. I know I was in my study. I know the gun was mine. It was my own hand that pulled the trigger, but not my will. Someone coerced you? Coerced? Controlled? I can't explain it. But there's a power at work here far beyond what I understand. And all I want is for you and your mother to stay as far away from it as you can. I lived a good life. And while I died with regrets, there are far fewer than I expected. I did my best as a father, husband, and businessman. I left my family a legacy that will ensure you're always provided for. You will have a good life if you don't linger on this one event. I'm only sorry I won't be here to see the man you finish becoming. Are you... Can you stay with us? I'd like nothing more. But your friend was right. I'm fading. I can feel myself becoming less all the time. But can you come back? I don't know. I wish I had the answers you need. But there's so many things I want to tell you that I realized I should have told you. The car you let me drive when I was 15, uh, right before I got my license. Someone didn't back into me at the yogurt shop. I backed into the statue outside City Hall, and you can totally still see the mark I left. Um, uh, when I was 16, I broke into your liquor cabinet. Every time you and Mom would go out of town, I'd invite all my friends over, and they'd invite their friends, and we'd have a house party. I threw keggers at the cabin up north. I had to repeat that econ class first year of college because I'm actually terrible at economics. Not because the teacher was a hard ass. I did so many stupid things I don't remember, but I'm sure I lied about them if you asked me. I'm a terrible son. I lied to you about this stupid, stupid stuff. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Why? Why are you smiling? Hamlet, I know all of these things already. You... you do? Of course. I'm your father. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not actually dating Feely. She just wants to placate her family, and I'm not missing out because I... I don't think I want to date anybody. Ever. I, I just don't have those kind of feelings. Did you know that? I didn't. But no matter what you tell me, I'll still love you. Always. Like your brother? I love you so much, Hamlet. More than you could ever know. I hope I see you again someday. Dad, no, just stay a little longer. Goodbye, Hamlet. Dad, no, please! <laughs> <laughs> 
Hamlet? <laughs> Hamlet, where's the ghost? What happened? He's gone. I can't believe he's gone. Hamlet, come on, talk to me. <laughs> What's wrong? I was right. It wasn't suicide. My father didn't kill himself. He was murdered, but he doesn't know how. He begged me not to go after his killer and said I would only get hurt, too. And? What did you say? God, I lied to him. I lied to my dead father one last time and told him I'd let it go. But I can't. If I know someone killed him, how am I supposed to just let that go? Let that person live a happy, full life after they've just taken one? I can't do it. It's an impossible position. Do I act like a good son, or do I hunt down this killer and choose to be a bad son? I don't know which is worse. To be or not to be. Is it better to live knowing I disobeyed my father's final wish, or to know that there's someone out there with blood on their hands? Will he know if I disobey him? Is he still capable of caring? His concern for me suggests yes. I talked to his ghost, for God's sake. Can he rest peacefully if I don't catch his killer? Or is that why he's still here? It's impossible to know what comes next, and yet I have to if I'm to make an informed decision. But the only way to get that information is to die myself, and then it's all pointless anyway. I just have to decide. I don't think I'm strong enough to make that choice. Even if I could decide what would best honor my father, how would I carry it out? Now that I know he was murdered, I'll never be able to stop thinking about it. I'm not built to let it go. And if I tried to find his killer, how can I live with myself, knowing that my every action spits in the face of my father's dying wish? My role has been cast here. It doesn't matter what I do. Either choice makes me a disgrace. Hey, I heard everything. Hamlet, it's going to be okay. Hey, look at me. I'm going to touch your hand now, okay? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Deep breaths. <laughs> you look like you feel like shit. Sounds accurate. Own your decision. You're going to hunt this killer down? So are Ophelia and I. We are? Yes. We are. But my father, he asked me... He asked you not to, yes. And you gave him the answer that you would offer in peace. There's no blame in that. You're a good son. You love your father. I've always done your best to respect him. But this? Now? Wanting justice doesn't make you a bad person. You're the one who's still alive. You're the one who has to live with the choice you make. The only person you can bring peace to is yourself. What about... More than justice. What about wanting revenge? You're a good man and a good son. If you were half as good to your father as you've been to me, you're up for child of the year. You'll figure out what's right for you and your father. I can't... I can't let this go. Then don't. I'll drive you to hell and back if that's what you need. I don't even know where to start. I do. Really? Yeah. For tonight, we drink enough that we can go to sleep with the knowledge that ghosts are real. And then, once we've come to terms with that, and only then, you can think about how you want to start investigating. Forgetting ghosts, reasoning through this, our best chance of success involves tequila. A lot of tequila. Haley, your phone's ringing. Oh, whatever. Answer your phone. Uh, Ophelia. Oh, for God's sake. Fine, fine. I'm answering it. Get a grip. Hello? Good morning, Ophelia. Long night? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Is that your dad? I can only assume. 
since you didn't come home last night. No, doesn't look like I did. Let me talk to him. I've got this. Is that your only explanation? Agreeing with the obvious? This is completely unacceptable behavior for a young woman. I won't have you wandering the town at all hours of the day or night. The business cannot afford another scandal so soon after a suicide. That's pretty callous, treating a death as a scandal. And if you'd give me half a second, I'd be able to tell you that I was... Hey! Polonius, this is Hamlet. I'm so sorry to interrupt your conversation with your daughter, but I wanted to let you know she was with me last night. I wasn't... wasn't well after the funeral, and she did me a great favor by staying with me. I couldn't be left by myself, and she was selfless enough to risk her own reputation for the sake of my well-being. You raised a wonderful young woman, sir. Oh, well, thank you, Hamlet. I, I trust you're feeling better. Much, thank you. I'll let you have your daughter back shortly. Much appreciated. Do take care. And let me know if you or your mother need anything. I'm very familiar with the financial accounts and would be happy to- You know I hate it when you do that. I made the problem go away, didn't I? I don't think that's the point. Well, what is the point, then? Do you want to have the same fight with your father as always, or do you want to skip a morning? It's whatever. It's fine. It doesn't sound like it's fine. Stop it. We're friends here. If we start fighting each other, we're sunk before we even set sail. Am I the only one who remembers last night? The absolute bat shittery that went down in the garage and what we agreed to do about it? Trust me, I remember. Couldn't forget it if I tried. And if all the empty bottles on the floor are any indication, I tried really, really hard. You did. We all did. And I think this bickering is just the hangover talking. So both of you man up and apologize. I didn't- Apologize. I'm sorry I snapped at you, Ham. I know you were just trying to help, and I appreciate your concern. I'm sorry I took your phone and played to your father's misogyny to placate him. I know it only encourages him to act that way in the long run. Okay, so if you clearly get that, why do you keep- Fili? Right. Apology accepted. Thank you for acknowledging what you did was wrong, and please don't do it again. You have my word. Great. That's out of the way. Now we can talk about what the hell we do next. How do you mean? I mean, what do we do about everything we learned last night? We got several puzzle pieces handed to us. And unless you've changed your mind about investigating Hamlet, we need to work on putting those pieces together. We have to figure out if they're edge pieces or something in the middle. Or if they mean anything at all. We need to separate the wheat from the chaff and decide what matters and how it relates to what else we know. You're going to have to be a lot more straightforward, Horatio. I spent my last brain cells lying to Polonius, and I'm way too hungover to figure out what fresh hell you're getting at. Okay. Let's break it down. Puzzle piece number one. Your father was murdered. Puzzle piece number two. You have an estranged uncle. Puzzle piece number three. Ghosts are real. I potentially have an estranged uncle. I need to finish following up on that. Ask my dad. Seemed like he'd talk your ear off about Claudius. Anything to stay in your good graces. Even then. I don't see how any of this goes together. I'm not so sure about that. My father... His ghost said to me last night that he felt like he was being coerced or controlled right before he died. That could bring pieces one and three together. How do you figure? Well, the appearance of a ghost suggests the existence of supernatural forces. If we apply that along the logical course, we can extrapolate that maybe my father was being controlled. Literally. Like, mind control? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. My father would never shoot himself. Not of his own will. This... this is just too weird. This is never the sort of problem I thought I'd have to deal with. Maybe as a kid watching Scooby-Doo, it would have occurred to me, but... Trust me, I know how you feel. I've spent my entire life devoted to logic and business. It's not easy to switch gears and start believing in mysticism. Think about it more, and we can catch up later. 
Where are you going? Home. I need to check on my mom and look into this whole long-lost uncle thing. If there's one thing that screams scam, it's a family member showing up just in time to inherit a fortune. Anytime you want me to kick that guy out of your house, just let me know. I'll let you know by the end of the day. And thank you for letting us stay the night. I hope we didn't disturb your grandmother downstairs. <laughs> Don't worry, that woman sleeps like a rock. She'll only ask me why I missed Jeopardy last night. We'll all come over and watch with her day after tomorrow to make up for it. Would she like that? She would love it. I should go to get this cluster of a conversation with my father over with. You never know. Maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, right. Talking with Polonius is like trying to have a conversation with a brick wall. He knows what he wants, and he knows how to get it. You get it. <sighs> well, then, good luck to both of you. Damn you, Keys. Do your bloody job and open the goddamn door. Otherwise, what good are you? For Christ's sake. Ophelia. For once, I'm pleased to say, you have excellent timing. Clearly, I'm gonna disagree with you on that. Come with me to the study. Father has been waiting to talk to you. So I've heard. I don't suppose you could be convinced to tell me how much trouble I'm about to be in. Or already am in. Patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. Come on, Larry. Just give me a hint. A little something to go on. I know it might physically pain you to treat me like a human being these days, but... Hello, Father. Laertes. Excellent. You found your sister. I was already here. One might even go so far as to say I found myself. In that case, thank you for coming, Ophelia. Have a seat. Why are you being nice to me? Does a father need a reason to have a pleasant conversation with his daughter? In this house? Yes. You might as well be direct, Father, if she's in the mood to be difficult. Joke's on you. I'm difficult in any mood. Direct. Yes, that's always worked better with you. I'll be up front. After the death of Mr. Prince, Denmark Inc. is in shambles. As CFO, I'm in excellent position to assume greater control of the company until, or even if... New leadership can be arranged. What makes you think Hamlet won't pick up where his father left off? He may well intend to. That's where you come in. I have ambitions, Ophelia, that would be much more attainable with a bit more information on my side. You're in the perfect position to provide that information. It's not like you would be breaking trust. Our family has worked with the princes for decades now. This is nothing more than communications. Yes, it's communications, meant to benefit both our families, which ideally may someday become one, yes? You're asking me to spy on Hamlet? Do the words corporate espionage mean nothing to you? It's a very ugly phrase, to be sure, and it certainly doesn't apply here. Like I said, nothing is leaving the business, just... Crossing departments. It's very common in the business world, Ophelia. All we're asking is for you to tell us if Hamlet happens to mention his plans for the company. If he plans to sell his father's shares, or assume the position himself. Nothing we wouldn't be told in good time. We'd just like to know ahead of time where we stand. Do I have any real choice here? That's my girl. Mom, it's Hamlet. I'm sorry I wasn't here last night. There was an emergency at uh, the offices. No rest for the wicked, even after a tragedy. <laughs> Mom, are you there? Okay, I'm coming in. Mom? Uh, Hamlet, uh, what time is it? It's Saturday morning. You... you slept through the wake. Oh. Oh. I, I'm sorry, Hamlet. 
It's okay, Mom. You needed the rest. <laughs> Listen, I need to ask you something, and it's going to come way out of left field, but it's really important that I get an answer. Did Dad ever mention or talk about, even in passing, having a brother? A brother that left the family and wasn't talked about? A brother? Hamlet, where is all this coming from? There's a man that came to the wake last night who says he's Dad's younger brother. His name's Claudius Prince. Obviously, I thought it was a scam, but he convinced me to listen to him. And it was, well, he was convincing to say the least. And Polonius acted like he knew him. I never heard of any brother. But your father was a very private man. You know this. He hardly ever talked about his childhood. I always got the impression it was unhappy. But your grandparents were wonderful people. I always found it hard to imagine them doing a poor job of parenting. Your father was just very goal-oriented. He preferred to look forward, never back. That's part of what makes his... <clears throat> his passing so difficult. <sighs> so, yes... I suppose it's possible that he had a brother. What do I... I just met this man and I don't know him. But if he's really family, how am I supposed to treat him? Like family, I suppose. I, I don't know, Hamlet. I'm sorry, I don't have the answers you're looking for. Sometimes I feel like I don't have any answers anymore. Maybe I never did. It's okay, Mom. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry I bothered you at all, but I didn't have anyone else to ask. I'll let you rest now. I'll bring some food by in a little while for you. Thank you, Hamlet. Uh, this man, claiming to be your father's brother, did he say why he came back now, of all times? Yes, he said he was tired of being shunned and shunning in return. He said he regrets only returning once it was too late to see my father again. He seemed sincere. A brother-in-law. An uncle. Maybe we're still a family after all. Mom, even if it's just you and me, we're still a family. We can be enough for each other. I... I know you're used to Dad being around and taking care of us, but I can do that too. I'm going to make sure that everything is okay. If there's more to the family, great. But we don't need them. We have each other. Always. Mom, are you listening? I'm listening. I love you, Hamlet. I love you too. Is this seat okay, Mom? Can I get you anything? Your sweater? Tea? Uh, no. Thank you, Hamlet. You didn't have to come, you know. It's the reading of the will. I could have handled it on my own. I know. But I needed to be here. For me. I understand. Feely, I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't expect to be here. Can I talk to you for a sec? It's not a great time. It's about that thing we were talking about a couple nights ago. You know, the important thing. Is something wrong? Oh, no, not at all, Mrs. Prince. Just, uh... I think I might have a drinking problem. That's not nothing. Oh, a drinking problem. I'll be right back, Mom. Are you okay here for a second? Good. Be right back. Is this about the ghost? Did you see it again? Shh, keep it down. Do you want everyone to think you've gone insane? Right. Sorry. But did you? Did he come back? No. No sign of the ghost. Then why- I had to say something to get you alone, and I figured this was better than saying I thought I was pregnant in front of your mother. Oh, yes. Well, thank you for that. It's about my dad and brother. I got home the morning after we saw the ghost, and they were practically lying in wait for me. They're circling like vultures, aiming to get ahead in the company now that there's a vacancy. They asked me to spy on you. And you're telling me you're supposed to spy on me? 
They didn't say I couldn't. Do you think they know something strange is going on? Do you think they might have information we could use? I have no idea. It appeared like they were just being their usual greedy selves, but I suppose there's no way to know. Asking them wouldn't get us very far. It's not like they'd rat themselves out. This might actually be a good thing. With Polonius and Laertes relying on you to give them updates on me, we have the chance to control the narrative. We can tell them whatever we want. And then, based on who reacts to that information, we can tell who they might be working with. That could give us a pool of suspects. Something more to work with other than murder, ghost, estranged uncle. You're making the murder suspects? Maybe. Sorry. No, that's okay, I get it. They're the type. Speaking of, here comes your delightful father with Claudius. Hamlet, it's good to see you again. I expected you would be here. I hope you don't mind, but Polonius invited me to attend the reading of the will. Not because I expect to be in it, but as family. Do you mind? Be my guest. I won't turn you away. I appreciate it. Is your mother here, by chance? I'd still love to meet her. She is. I'll introduce you after the reading, provided she feels up to it. Right now, though, I think I just saw the lawyer arrive. Should we go inside? Excellent idea, Hamlet. Ophelia, Laertes is downstairs. You can go wait with him. She's with me. Of course. Uh, after you. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for being here. I know most of you here today, but for those of whom I haven't had the pleasure, I'm Marcellus, the late Mr. Prince's executor. In addition to reading the will, I'll be carrying out any orders, including disseminating inheritance and the like. Since this is a very large estate, that process may take longer than would be ideal. I ask you for your patience and understanding, and assure you all will be dealt with in due time. Before we start today, does anyone have any questions or something to say? I think we can just get on with it, if you don't mind, Miss Marcellus. Yes, sir. As a matter of record, I'd like to state that I myself have not yet viewed Mr. Prince's last will and testament as per his wishes. As you can see, this envelope is fully sealed. Well, what does it say, man? I... This is most unusual. Please just read it. <sighs> I, Hamlet Prince Senior, wish to make it clear that I do not wish my estate to be divided up between parties. Instead, all of my holdings, including my stakes in Denmark Inc., my personal bank accounts, and all properties, will pass to one party only. It is with this in mind that I bequeath all my earthly possessions to one person. His son. My brother, Claudius Prince. What? How can that be? He hadn't spoken to the man in 35 years. Let me see that paper. If this is some kind of mistake, I'll have your job, Marcellus. Your is whole that career. Really what it says? That. That's. Bullshit! This guy could be anyone! He if I'm in the will, the I think it proves I'm not just anyone. You're not just in the will. You are the will. Hey, gentlemen. Miss, please, remain civil. I can't... I can't believe this. He would never... <laughs> we have nothing! Uh... Mother? How is she? Ophelia's with her now. She's resting. I think it was shock on top of everything else that's happened. Thank you for helping me get her home. That's what family's for. On the topic of family, Hamlet, I'm just as shocked as you are over the contents of the will. Obviously, you should look into it and make sure everything is in order. I won't blame you. But I want you to know, if the will stands, 
You and your mother won't want for anything. Nothing has to change for you. It's already a pretty big change, Claudius. Yes, yes, you're right. What I mean is, you don't have to worry about where you live, where you'll eat. You mean you won't turn us out on the street? In blunt terms, exactly. I'm not here to ruin lives. In fact, I'd like it if this could bring us closer. It feels like your father is inviting me back into the family by doing this. If you'll have me. I'd like that. That sounds like a very nice feeling. And I hope you don't take it as an insult when I tell you I certainly will be looking into the integrity of the will. As you should. Even I can see how strange this all is. I'm glad we're on the same page. Was there something else? Yes, actually. And then I'll be on my way. I know you must want to spend some time with your mother. I intended to ask you this before the reading, but never got a chance. I mentioned to you that you had cousins the other night, and I was wondering how you would feel if I asked my daughters to join me in town. In town or here? That's up to you and your mother, of course. I would graciously accept an invitation, but there's no need to extend one. The hotel I've been staying at is perfectly adequate. I only bring this up because I think you would like them very much. I know they're eager to meet you. They lost their mother almost a year ago now. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. It's been hard on all of us. I thought, with you losing your father so suddenly, maybe you could do each other some good. You could be right. Again, I'll need to talk to my mother about this when she's feeling better. But if my cousins were to arrive, I'd certainly be interested in meeting them. Excellent. Truly excellent. I was hoping you'd say that. I'll go now. Give you some space. No need to see me out. I know the way. He's a snake. I thought you were taking care of my mother. I was. She popped a couple of her Xanax prescription and went right to sleep. That gave me time to hang around at the top of the stairs and listen to everything you and Claudia said. And, like I already told you, he's a snake. Most people find eavesdropping rude. But not you, right? <laughs> I'll give you a pass, sure. What makes you say Claudius is a snake? Are you kidding? Just listen to the man for two seconds and it's obvious. Humor me. I want to hear your thoughts. Okay. His timing, for one. He arrives just in time to hear the reading of the will and ends up getting everything. That's not normal. I have no idea how he did it. Did what? Switched copies of the will. You think he did? That's literally the only option. No, there are a plethora of options, including the option where my dad really did intend to leave Claudius everything. As a sort of um, apology, maybe. Does that sound like your dad? <laughs> Not particularly. No, it doesn't. And you don't sound like you. Before, you were all gung-ho about investigating Claudius. But then, you talk to him for five minutes and you're on his side. I don't want to rush into anything. We have to consider every option. Just be careful that whoever killed your father doesn't work faster than you. What do you mean? There's a murderer walking around Hamlet. Clearly, they wanted something. We don't know if they've already gotten it, but if they haven't, what's to stop them from killing again? Well, ideally, me. Which is why you have to do something. Enough with the contemplation. It's time for us to take action. You're right. I'm wasting time. Call Horatio. Tell him tomorrow we're searching my father's office here at the house. That's where he spent most of his time, so if there's going to be a clue somewhere... It'll be there. Why tomorrow? Why not today? Because right now, I need to take care of my mother. Right. I should probably go home and deal with stuff, too. What do you want me to tell my father and Laertes? They're definitely going to ask. For now, tell them the truth. I'm confused, a little angry, and I'm going to look into the will. Okay. Stay safe, Hamlet.
You too, Feely. Noon tomorrow? Noon tomorrow. Your dad must have something like the equivalent of a couple hundred trees in here, dude. How does one man have so much paper? The man kept everything. Bet. I just saw a tax return from 1982. Oh, this is a nightmare. It has been for a while now. <sighs> I'm going to think out loud here, if that's alright with you two. Please. It would be great to hear thoughts that aren't my own. Okay. I'm going back to our puzzle analogy. We've got a few more pieces of information to fit in. Now, we've got one. Your dad's a ghost. Two, your father was murdered. Three, you have an estranged uncle. Four, everything was left to your uncle. Five... Do we even need five? That sounds like motive to me. Omitting evidence is just as unhelpful as planting it. Go on, Horatio. Right. Five. Claudius hasn't claimed any of his new property, and in fact encouraged you to look into the validity of the will. To me, that doesn't suggest a lot of subterfuge. If Claudius were trying to pull a fast one, why would he give you a chance to see through it like that? It doesn't make sense. Unless, of course, that's exactly why he's doing it. Option two. Maybe Claudius didn't mess with the will. Maybe everything really was left to him. We have to consider that, but I don't think so. My father was very open about this kind of thing. Years ago, when he was first having a will written up, he told my mother and I that he was leaving everything to us. Hell, I think my mother was there for some of the legal appointments. Something changed drastically between the writing of the will and the reading of it. Whether my father was involved in that change is what we have to question. And we still need to factor in six. Your father's ghost said he felt like he was made to shoot himself. That's worrying. I still can't wrap my head around that part. It's not like someone could hold a gun to a man's head to make him shoot himself in the head. It's redundant. A damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. So I can't help but think we're not talking about coercion as much as we are a more literal interpretation. Earth to Hamlet and Horatio, we're skipping over the most likely possibility. Oh? What's that? Blackmail. If someone approached him and threatened to, I don't know, reveal something from his past, your father might have killed himself to protect his family and his business. My father did keep secrets. Like Claudius, if we're believing the brother's story. But that doesn't explain the ghost saying he was compelled. Still. Maybe instead of rifling through the veritable forest of useless old papers, we should look into who your father met with the week or so before his death. You mentioned his appointment book right after the funeral. Do you still have it? The police wanted to take it away as evidence. It was covered in blood and... and other things. That doesn't answer the question. Yeah, I still have it. Wait here. Do we want to talk about the fact that Hamlet is maybe withholding evidence from the police? Evidence that may have changed their minds about calling it a suicide? Not really, no. You sure? It doesn't make any damn sense. Nothing makes any damn sense right now, Feely. At this point, I'm just glad we have the appointment book. We've taken things into our own hands, but if we find something, there's no reason we can't take it to the police ourselves. That's true. I'm just... Worried, I guess. Hamlet isn't thinking clearly. Would you be? Fair point. Here it is. Don't mind the... Massive blood stain. Yeah. Put it on the desk so we can all take a look. Wow. My dad sure is in here a lot. I don't think that's particularly unusual. Still, it doesn't exactly knock him off the suspect list. What about this? He has lunch blocked out, but there are no names. He did that every week. It was a board meeting. Always standard, so he didn't need to label it. Well, what about this on Wednesday? 
It just says DQ. DQ? You think the Dairy Queen killed him? <laughs> it could be someone's initials. Or it was cheat day and he wanted ice cream. He didn't have a cheat day and he was lactose intolerant. Besides, that's definitely a P. Are you sure? Absolutely sure. See how the letter comes down past the line? I thought that was blood. Even if it is a P. It is. Does PQ mean something to you more than DQ? No. Great. So that gets us a big fat nothing. Not necessarily. Hamlet, did your dad keep any other kind of record book? An address book, maybe? He had a Rolodex somewhere around here. Uh, check the second drawer. Seriously, a Rolodex? Has this man never heard of going paperless? Even my dad has evolved past that. Just be glad he hadn't upgraded and put everything on his phone. Then we'd be sitting here guessing passwords for days. Got something. This card says PQ or DQ at the top and there's an address written underneath. Nothing else. Read me the address. I'll look the place up. 1909 Marksbury Street. That's downtown, isn't it? I think so. Just a second. Oh. Wow. That's unexpected. This isn't one of those that address has been vacant for 50 years things, right? Because I really can't take that right now. It's there, all right. You guys just aren't going to believe what it is. It's a psychic. A psychic? Uh-huh. Player Queen Psychic and Tarot Readings. I guess that answers the PQ versus DQ question. And raises about a hundred others. What would my father be doing at a psychic of all places? He never believed in that kind of thing. He thought it was tantamount to daylight robbery. Ironic, now that he's a ghost. Wait, do you think maybe the psychic made him a ghost? As, as punishment? How do you make a ghost? And punishment for what? I don't know. I'm doing what Horatio did, thinking out loud. Does this place have a website? Can you find any more information about it? Nope. So, we go there? Uh, that would be the natural progression, I think. I'm just gonna put what we're all thinking out there and say, what if they make us a ghost? Is this how we're referring to murder now? It was a stupid turn of phrase, I'll give you that, but it's not that funny. I don't know if we have much of a choice, if we want to continue the investigation. Everything else in his appointment book looks completely innocuous. Right, Hem? Very standard. A typical week. So then, if we want to keep going on with this investigation, I think we're going to have to go down there. Should we bring... weapons? The answer to that is almost always going to be a resolute no. Unless for some reason you want to insert ways for us to get made into ghosts for some reason. No, you're right. So just to recap... Investigating a murder leads us to this psychic. Your dad is now a ghost, which is something very psychic adjacent. And we're just gonna go over there, knock on the door, and flat out ask them about it, giving them the opportunity to smite us or ghost us or whatever other horrible thing could be in store. Am I missing anything? That seems to cover it. I'll drive. Here we are, Player Queen, I See Dead People Incorporated. Special delivery. What's our strategy? To ask them if they remember my father. I have pictures on my phone I can show them. Maybe we don't want to rush right in with the interrogation. I think we should try to get a feel for these people first. If it seems like we might be in danger, we can leave without having them any wiser. I like this plan. Hamlet, we're doing Horatio's plan. Fine with me. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Miss. How may I help you? A reading, perhaps? Or a consultation of the tarot? Uh, we were just... just curious. The sign out front? Is it called Player Queens because you play at being a queen, or because you're a queen who's a player? Feely. <laughs> Step into my reading room and find out, Ophelia. 
I'd be happy to tell you. How did you know my... And you, Horatio, steadfast as you are, open your mind, and maybe you will learn the secrets of the cosmos. Or perhaps have some queries more dear to you answered. Holy shit. Guys, let's... Wait. If you know the names of my friends, you must also know me. And therefore, my father. I know you well, Hamlet. Your father spoke of you. He was very fond of you. And worried, too. I wonder, have you had a visitation? How... how are you doing this? You say that like it's a trick. It's not. I know what is revealed to me, for I am the player queen, trusted confidant of forces I befriend, but never understand. I am the left hand of judgment and the right hand of fate. So tell me, adult children, what questions would you ask me? Tell me everything you know about my father's death. I offered to answer your questions. I didn't hear a question. Is there a catch? What do you want from us in return for giving us answers? We're not looking to end up in moral doubt here. Look at you. So cautious. One might think you'd seen something to put you on edge lately. One might? So, is there a catch? I already made my offer. Unsolicited. Take what I say at face value. My methods of gaining information may be indirect. But I, myself, am not. I may ask you questions, yes but only to better understand what information I have, or to feed my own curiosity. You are under no obligation to answer in any case. So no answer me these riddles three? I'm a psychic, not an ogre. Now, how about you tell me, where are you in the process of your investigation? It's hard for me to keep track of the past, present, and future all at once. It would be more efficient to tell me what you already know, so I don't waste your time telling you over again. I spoke with my father's ghost. Hamlet, are you sure about this? Oh good, he found you. I was hoping I set him on his way back to you. You made him a ghost? Of course not. You can't make a ghost. But I did encourage him to stick around after his body's death. And he believed that was possible? Not at all. But sometimes even planting an outlandish idea is enough. People will embrace even the most foreign concepts. If they become desperate enough. So you told him to remain here in spirit because you knew he would become desperate enough to do it? Yes. Did you perhaps also consider helping him avoid the need to become a spirit? That's not the way my power works. I can't intervene in events. Only recount what has happened and what will happen. Is it that in itself intervening? Who's to say? A lot of people, I think. The guy who invented the butterfly effect, maybe. Nobody invented the butterfly effect. They discovered it. You know what I mean. Back to the matter at hand. Can you tell us what you told Mr. Prince? Yes, I can. You ask good questions. Can I designate you spokesperson for your little group? I don't think that would be very fair. I didn't ask about fair. Please answer the question. This is all starting to make my head hurt. I told your father that I thought he would benefit 
from a psychic reading. He consented, and I saw death in his future. His own. I told him this. He was already very addled and had arrived in such a state. He asked what he could do to avoid his fate, and I said there were many choices he could make. He could flee, hire security, hide in his home. Would any of those things have saved him? I couldn't say. He didn't choose those paths, and therefore... I don't see those futures. I do know, because of the manner of his death, it would have been incredibly difficult to evade. Say more. How so? He was slated to die through mystical forces. A curse is not easily deterred and usually only fails to reach its target when purposefully redirected by the caster. A curse? You expect me to believe that my father was killed by a curse? No, I don't expect you to believe it. Not yet, anyway. That doesn't make it any less the truth. I'm sorry, ma'am, but that sounds like bullshit. Agreed. I never said you had to believe what I tell you. I would encourage it, though. It could save your own life. There's a very slim chance of that. But still, any edge you can get will certainly benefit you. I'm in danger too? If you continue down the path you're currently fixated on, yes. You're in significant danger. Your friends as well. How do we protect ourselves? The same way your father could have. Run, hide, drastically alter your course in life. You'd likely have more luck than he did, since a curse hasn't been set upon you. At least to the best of my knowledge. Until that happens, you have nearly a 50% chance of survival, I'd say. And what if we don't change anything? Then the curse will find you. You're talking about this curse like it's a living thing. Is it? It's not alive, nor is it intelligent. It's more... instinctive. The caster, however, is both alive and intelligent. Murder is not committed without motive, so if you stand in the path of this person and what they stand to gain, you become the same obstacle as the late Mr. Prince. Terrific. Okay, so who is the caster? I believe that might be the most direct challenge you've yet posed to the caster. So much for staying out of his way. Just answer the question. I can't. I don't know who the caster is. Why not? He isn't yet in a position where a clear progression of actions would reveal him. You have a ways to go before you open that particular pathway. Nothing is ever simple. Do you have any more questions? Not now. Not yet. If we do come up with more as we keep investigating, can we come talk to you again? Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. I won't be here for much longer. You're closing down? Something like that. Well, thank you for what you told us gives us a lot to think about. My parting advice is to think about those things quickly. Drive safe and avoid the highway. There's an accident that will hold you up for nearly an hour. Thanks. (laughs) 
So how much of that are we going to believe? For better or for worse, after seeing a ghost, I'll believe pretty much anything. Curse, no problem. Makes as much sense as anything else that's been going on lately. I agree, even though I don't want to. I don't believe in curses, but a couple of days ago I didn't believe in ghosts. Look where that got me. Well, that brings up the question of how we go forward. We're apparently in danger. I understand if you guys want to back out. This isn't your battle to fight. I'm still in. I love making stupid decisions. And Horatio is far too nice to bail. That's... nice of you to say. I said that you were nice, not that you were smart. That's more like it. Feely, who are you texting? Ugh, it's Laertes. He wants to know where I am. Tell him. Let Polonius think I went to a psychic. If we're still doing this, I think it becomes more important to approach this problem obliquely. We should act like people would expect. I'll play the grieving son, you the doting girlfriend, Horatio, you're the supportive friend. That's a layer of protection between us and the killer. If they don't know we're a threat, they'll be less inclined to come after us. And behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, we're the scheming bastards that are going to catch my father's killer. Oh, there you are. Now I see you. But will you come for me? Or? Yes. You will. To whom it may concern, I apologize for the mess. There's $200 in the cash register. Please use it to pay for the cleanup, and make sure the poor souls doing the work get a decent tip. They have a grisly job, and I hate to add to it. Please don't trouble yourself about my death. I've seen it coming for quite some time now. And though I wish things had turned out differently, I'm glad I could usher a few of the next generation along their path before my time was up. Granted, theirs may be soon as well, but it comforts me to think I gave them a fighting chance. That's all I could ever ask for in my line of work, to give people the chance to make their lives better. I cannot change, only encourage others to do for themselves. And yet, here I stand at the hour of my demise, ready to embark upon the greatest change, the passage from life to death, the transformation from body to spirit. I've spoken to enough ghosts to know that I'd rather not hang around after dying, so I won't be heard from again. That's the purpose of this note. To say goodbye. Closure for myself, before I no longer have any need for closure. What an odd and utterly human ritual the act of leaving a note is. I have a cat who lives in the back room. She will need a new home. But before you take her to the animal shelter, Please know that she takes medication. It can be found on the top right shelf in the bathroom. The electricity and water bill is paid through the rest of the month. The keys are under the front counter. Help yourself to any furniture or decor you'd like. Waste not. <sighs> that should do it. Kush should be here any second. I'd imagine. And I don't own a gun, so it'll be interesting to see how it... Dad? 
Just a minute, Rosie. I'm just cleaning up. Okay, no rush. I just know you said you wanted to head over to the house and see if Hamlet was around. We really want to meet him. You understand this isn't purely a social visit, right, girls? You've said it a million times. Yes. Julia? Yes, I understand. You want to know everything we learned about Hamlet and what he's up to. Especially so after the interesting message I just heard from Polonius. Apparently, your cousin has been to visit a psychic. That can't be good. It's resolved now. But girls, I need you to report back to me exactly what that woman told him. Yes, father. Why are there three cars in your driveway when there's usually only two? I have a pretty good guess. Do you recognize the car? Also, no, but there's only one person I can think of who would invite himself around at a time like this. Claudius. Brace yourselves. Oh, there you are, Hamlet. You have perfect timing. Claudius just dropped by to introduce his daughters. Mom, what are you doing up? You shouldn't be entertaining. You need rest. Hush, I'm fine. They've been no trouble at all. Hello, Hamlet. Ophelia, Horatio. Pleasure to see you again as well. I'm sorry for the intrusion. I'd have been more than happy to come back another time, but your mother insisted. She's been very welcoming. I can see that. Not to be rude, but... Claudius, what are you doing here? Hamlet? No, no, it's a valid question. My daughters are here, like we talked about. Would you be up for meeting them? I'm sure they'd also love to meet your friends. I'll gladly meet your daughters. Feely, not now. Wonderful, wonderful. Girls, come meet your cousin and his friends. Hello, I'm Rosalind. Everyone calls me Rosie. It's really nice to meet you. Hello, Rosie. I'm Feely. It's such a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Seriously. I'm Julia. Spelled the strange way, with a G. It's great to finally meet you, Hamlet. And your friends, too. Charmed. Hello. Hi. Would you be interested in giving the girls a little tour? You have some lovely grounds around the house. Was that a duck pond I saw out back? It's a koi pond. And I'm sorry, but I need to have a rather urgent word with my mother. I'd be more than happy to give a little tour. I've lived here basically my whole life, so I know it almost as well as Hamlet. That's so generous of you, if you really don't mind. I really, really don't. I should be on my way home. It was nice to meet you. You have a lovely tour. Oh, Horatio, you don't have to go just yet, do you? Help Ophelia give the tour. Make sure she doesn't get sidetracked. If you insist. I do. I don't need a babysitter. Did you hear me say that you did? Kind of, yeah. That was obviously not my intention. Go on, have a good tour. Be sure to show them the pond, like Claudius asked. Yes, my liege. Horatio? Coming. What was it you wanted to talk about, Hamlet? In private, please? It would be horribly rude, leaving your uncle all alone. I'm sure whatever it is you need to say, you can say in front of- It's no trouble, really. Go speak with your son. I don't mind at all. I have a few calls I need to make anyway. Pretend I'm not even here. If you're sure, Claudius. All right, Hamlet. We can talk upstairs. Wow, you... you tidied up here. Bed made, shutters open. I can't lay around in bed forever. As much as I may want to. Besides... I hear sunlight is supposed to be good for your mood. Something about vitamin D? 
Yeah, it is. I'm glad to see you doing better. Thank Claudius. He's been wonderful to talk to. Telling me childhood stories about your father. It's been lovely. Getting to know a different side of him. Even though he's gone. Actually, Claudius is what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh? Don't you think it's a little too convenient, him showing up now? I mean, he only arrived after father died. If he was truly interested in making amends with the family, don't you think he would have done it when there was a chance to get actual forgiveness from dad? People wait until it's too late all the time. He said your father's death reminded him that he didn't have time to wait forever to come and find us. But why did he want to come find us at all after dad was dead? He has no personal connection to you and me. I can't convince myself, no matter how much I would like to, that his motivations are entirely pure. Doesn't it strike you as even a little bit odd that he showed up just in time to inherit literally everything? If that doesn't scream suspicion, I don't know what does. Oh, yes I do. Being friends with Polonius. You weren't there, but Ophelia's dad was over the moon to see Claudius when he first arrived. And Polonius only ever gets excited when he sees dollar signs, so... Don't talk about Polonius like that. He's worked with your father for decades. How dare you look down on him like that? Because he treats Feely like dog shit and has only hung around Denmark Inc. so long because it fills his pockets? He's not a nice man, Mom. Never has been. But he's good at his job, and that was reason enough for Dad to keep him around. Maybe he knew that if I inherited the company, I'd send him on his way. So he decided to take matters into his own hands, bring in a new heir that would also benefit him. Hamlet, can't you hear yourself? You're spouting conspiracy where there is none. First of all, you're passing absurd judgment over a man who has been like a part of this family. Polonius has been loyal, trustworthy and efficient as long as we've known him. Second, it's extremely callous to pass judgment on Claudius like that. You may be grieving her father, and I a husband. But Claudius is now mourning a brother he missed for the past 30 years. Do you think that's easy on him? The last thing he needs is to be accused of duplicity at a time like this. But if you'd look at the facts, even you were shocked when Marcellus read the will giving Claudius everything. Hell, we haven't even established that he really is family. Stop it. Claudius has told me things only a brother could know about your father. Like it or not, he is your uncle and he is family. But how do you know the things he's told you are true? You said it yourself. Dad was a very private man. Claudius could be making things up to string you along. Don't you see how easy it would be? Just because I am a woman, and just because I am a widow, does not make me an idiot, Hamlet. Yes, I was shocked. And yes, I was suspicious. But those fears have been assuaged, and I have been reassured. By Claudius? In part. I suppose you think that he and Polonius conspired to have the will changed to award him everything? In so many words, yes. I don't know if or to what degree Polonius was involved, but Claudius, certainly. Don't you see how impossible that is? The will was sealed with the notary's signature intact before Marcellus read it. It was not tampered with. In fact, Marcellus called this morning to tell me just that. The will is valid. It's... the will stands? Claudius gets everything? Yes. He's assuming the position of CEO later this week. He's being very responsive. Doesn't want to waste any time in getting the company back on track. This is... this is insane. Hamlet, it's time for you to accept... Th Why do you keep siding with Claudius? How did he get to you so fast and so completely? I don't understand, Mom. I really don't. Why won't you believe me? I'm your son, for God. And I am your mother. Why don't you trust me? <sighs> I know this must be very hard for you. It's been hard for me, too. But it looks like this is what our reality will be now. Claudius has assured me that you and I will be taken care of. I bet he did. It will take some getting used to, I know. And I know you're expecting to inherit- This is about far more than inheritance, Mom. It's about what Dad would have wanted. And... Never mind. You wouldn't believe me anyway. Hamlet! I'll talk to you later. I can't... I can't be here right now. 
This is the duck pond we were talking about. I don't know why it's called that. Ducks never come here. We're too close to the city. Still, it's about duck-sized. I think it's nice. Have you ever thought about putting goldfish in it? I did, once. Neighbors cat ate all of them. Oh, that's sad. Thanks for that uplifting aside, Horatio. Anyway, tell me about yourselves. I know your names, but what do you like to do? Maybe your thoughts on chamber music or something. <laughs> I like music. Not sure about chamber music, though. There's this little bar back home, and every Saturday they get a new local band to play. Drinks are always half off because sometimes the bands... They're not really good, but they still want people to come. It's fun, good music or not. Oh my god, I love the sound of that. I wish we had something like that around here, but the closest we've got is turning up the radio and drinking in Horatio's garage. It would be great if there was another place we could do that. Not that I don't mind cleaning up broken glass with a hangover. Oh, you love it. You guys should come visit sometime and check it out. Oh, and we could also show you this adorable little shop that sells jewelry bits, like beads and clasps and pretty stones. It's niche, I know, but I love that place. It sounds great. I've never made jewelry myself, but I'd love to see how it's done. Maybe I could commission one of you. <laughs> Ow! Are you okay? I'm fine. Just tripped on a rock. Oh, Horatio, you're so clumsy. Hey, man. Is everything okay? Short version? No. Not at all. Can we do anything? I need you to take me somewhere. I need to be somewhere else right now. We're kind of in the middle of a tour. We can pick up another time. There's clearly something you need to go take care of. Don't worry about us. If you're sure. Just promise we can pick it up again next time. Promise. Feely. Coming. See you girls. What's going on? What happened inside? I don't want to talk about it. Just... Just drive me somewhere. My garage. Sure. Let's go. Are you sure about this, Hamlet? You haven't been home in days. You haven't been sleeping or eating. Maybe you should try talking with your mom again before you take any drastic steps. I'm sure. I've told you ten times now how sure I am. My mother has sold herself into whatever bullshit Claudius is peddling. She's no help. The longer I wait, the less of a chance we have to find something in my father's office. I see where you're coming from. I really do. But- But this is serious. We're talking about stealing company property. Company property that no longer belongs to you. Well, don't say it out loud right in front of the damn building. Philly's got a point. If we get caught- It'll be fine. Are you coming or what? Hey, Bernardo. Afternoon, Hamlet. Didn't expect to see you coming around. I just came to pick up some of the things from my father's office. These two are with me. They're here to help. Sure thing. Just swipe your badge and I can let you through. Things fiddly. Try it again. Maybe you swiped it the wrong way. I work downstairs in the design lab. I've got it. I can't believe this. It's insane. Bernardo, you know us- I'm sorry, Hamlet. I'm just as shocked as you are. But I can't let you through. Not without an approved escort. But- Hamlet, maybe we should just leave. Ophelia, I can't- Hello, Hamlet. Ophelia. The other one. What brings you here? Laertes? What the- I mean, Laertes! Nice to see you. We were just here to pick up some of Mr. Prince's things. To make room for Claudius, so he could have a fresh start, you know? Is that so? <laughs> Having a bit of trouble getting past the front door, it looks like. I think that's my fault. Hamlet and I were over at Horatio's a few nights ago, and, well, I spilled beer on both of them. Really, Ophelia? Beer? Is this going someplace? Yes, 
of course it is. Because I spilled the beer, I offered to throw their jackets in the wash. You did laundry at someone else's house. You put Hamlet's suit through a machine cycle. Yes, and it was a different jacket. A, a worse one. Anyway, I forgot to check their pockets before I threw them in because, you know, beer and I guess their badges were in there and it probably fucked up the microchips or however those things work. It's a magnetic strip. The wash wouldn't do much to it. Apparently it doesn't take much. What can I tell you? I screwed up and now Hamlet can't go get his dad's stuff. Help me out? I'll really owe you one. You already owe me about 50. According to you. But seriously, are you going to stop us short on a bereavement mission? Let them through, Bernardo. I'll see them upstairs. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, Laertes. Yeah, thanks, man. Just don't cause a scene. I'll deny helping you if you get into any sort of trouble. Would I ever get you in trouble, Larry? I mean it, Ophelia. I mean it, Ophelia. Come on, guys. What floor was your father's office again? Fourth. Elevators are to the right. Quick thinking with a beer incident story. Thanks. Every good lie is usually rooted in the truth. You actually put our badges through the wash? No, but how many times have you seen me spill my drink? Countless. It's only a matter of time until Laertes figures out that we weren't denied entry by mistake and that we're actually not wanted here. We probably have even less time than we originally thought. So we'll have to be fast. I can do fast. You guys each pick a file cabinet. I'll start at the desk. What exactly are you hoping will turn up this time? Same thing as at his home office. Anything unusual, anything that stands out. Anything that might point us in the right direction to solve his murder. Right. But I think what Feely is asking is how do we know what that looks like? We knew PQ stood out, and that led us to the player queen. Something like that. Something not right. That could be almost anything. And if we're working in a rush, there's not much chance to find it. So look for the obvious. Just do your best. We have to get through as much as we can in the time we have. We're not going to get a second chance at this. Well, this file cabinet is locked. Does that count for anything? It might. Should we look around for a key, or- We don't have time to look for a key. Move over, Horatio. What are you going to do with that letter opener? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is there at least something in there? It's a book. A really, really old book. Well, pull it out. I want to see. What language even is this? I've never seen anything like it. I'm not like a scholar or anything, but I can tell you if I'm looking at Spanish or Korean or probably Russian, they're recognizable. This is... Jumbo nonsense. Wait, back up a page, Ham. What's that? Pentagram. Pentagram? It's a five-pointed star inside a circle commonly used in... I know what a pentagram is. I was going to say, what's it doing here? Isn't it obvious? No. Enlighten us. The psychic said my father was killed by a curse. This book has a pentagram in it, and that symbol is commonly used to represent ritual magic. It's all over Salem, Massachusetts, for example. Therefore, we can expect this book contains a ritual of some sort. Maybe even the curse. That's a lot of maybes, my man. Give me a better explanation. I'll wait. Um, just because we found a weird book in an office that's going to belong to Claudius doesn't mean- He's already been here. See that hunting trophy? That's not my dad's. There are two pictures of Rosie and Julia on the desk. He's already started moving in, and I bet you anything he brought this with him. It's a possibility. Hang on. It looks like there's something else in this drawer. Is that- the gun my father used to kill himself. Yeah. Yeah, it is. What the hell is it doing here? That's a very good question. Jesus! Mr. Prince, are you in here? Just a minute. Phoebe, get the book in your purse. Whatever you do, don't let them take it from you. We need to have a better look at it. Why me? 
What are you doing? Don't put the gun in your pocket, for God's sake! Stick to the plan. Go quietly if they ask. Thank you. Mr. Prince? Coming! Bernardo. Polonius. What can I do for you? This is a very awkward situation, Mr. Prince. And I'm not sure how to go about it, but Mr. Polonius has informed me- Your uncle has requested that you, your friend, and my daughter be denied entry to the property until such time as the shock of your father's death and the contents of the will have blown over. I'm sure you understand. I'm pretty sure I don't. What are you telling me? You are not allowed on Denmark Inc. property at this time, Mr. Prince. I'll need to escort you and your two friends out. No. We'll just grab a few things and be on our- Nothing may be removed from the premises at the current time. I'm- I'm sorry. Please, come with me. Yes, sir. All right. Hamlet? I need a moment to speak to Polonius, Bernardo. I'll be right out. Unfortunately, I must insist. Bernardo, if you ever had any respect for my father, let me have this. Please. If you're not down in five minutes, I'm coming back up. That's fine. What is it you're so eager to talk to me about? Or would interrogate be a better word? Whichever you prefer. I want you to tell me everything you know about Claudius. And why would I do that? Because my father was murdered. And if you want to prove you weren't an accomplice, you'll tell me everything I want to know. Murdered. An accomplice. Claudius was right, barring you from the property. You're not well, Hamlet. I may no longer be your boss, Polonius, but I can still make your life very difficult. Start talking. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. It's absurd to think I killed your father. He was my employer. My benefactor. Why would I want to hurt him? The better question is, what did you stand to gain from his death? Perhaps you thought you'd take over his position yourself. Maybe Claudius promised you money. Power. Both things would be enough to convince you to kill. Hamlet, how dare you? I know you, Polonius, better than you think. You treat people like tools for your own betterment. Ophelia, even Laertes, you think marrying Ophelia to me will cement your place in the family company, giving you more bargaining power. And Laertes, you've just turned into a miniaturized version of yourself. His gain is your gain. Your drive, combined with your friendship with Claudius, is enough to make me more than a little suspicious. You'll have to do a lot better than you have so far to convince me otherwise. Your father killed himself, boy. It's not my fault that he- What? That he shot himself? With this? Where? Where where did you get that? Hamlet! Don't worry. I'm not threatening you. Not with a gun, anyway. I found it here, with Claudius's things. Care to explain that? I, I can't. You, you know I can't. Do I? What about Claudius? You still haven't told me about him. There's nothing special about Claudius, Hamlet. Just like there was nothing special about your father's death. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. It's not the answer you want, but it's the only one I have. Granted, Claudius' return is a surprise. Uh, the will is a surprise. Everything is a surprise, but oh, what else can we do but accept it? But if it's an inside look at Claudius that will make you put that gun away, that will put you back in your right mind, I'll give it to you. Where do you want me to start? His teenage years? Earlier? I remember when they brought him home from the hospital. I, I can tell you all about his- You... You... Shot... Oh my god. Oh my god. Polonius! Oh my god, I didn't mean to- It wasn't loaded. My- My finger, it wasn't anywhere near the trigger. I don't know what could have- Polonius, Polonius, please answer me. Polonius, please answer me. Mr. Prince. My God, Mr. Prince. What did you do? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. Do you take milk or sugar with your tea, Hamlet? 
No, thank you. Gertrude? Sugar, please. I know why I'm here, okay? We don't have to do the song and dance with the hot beverage and asking me how I've been feeling lately. I feel like shit. Something terrible happened. It didn't happen because of how I'm feeling. Well, what are we supposed to think, Hamlet? You took the gun your father used to kill himself and shot Polonius and... <laughs> this has gone too far. A man is dead because you can't accept your father's death. And you shouldn't either. But here you are, getting cozy with Claudius, while Dad's body has barely cooled. Enough. Fighting won't get us anywhere. I know you both must feel very distraught right now, but don't take it out on each other. Agreed? <sighs> You're right. Hamlet? What am I even doing here? You said it yourself. A man is dead. Shouldn't I be in a jail cell? The incident occurred on private property on a weekend. The only other people in the building were two receptionists on the first floor, Bernardo and Laertes. Bernardo has agreed to keep the incident to himself until we, as a family, have had time to talk. So you've dragged Bernardo into this now? I believe it was you who did that, Hamlet. You've made him an accessory to murder. If I go to jail for this, which I should... Set aside the prospect of jail for the time being. Walk your mother and I through what exactly happened. How am I supposed to forget about jail? Wait, is this about another scandal? Are you... are you covering this up? Tell us what happened, Hamlet. I brought Feely and Horatio with me to collect some of Dad's things from his office. Bernardo let us up for a while, then came back with Polonius to say that you didn't want any of us on company property. I'm still curious about that, by the way. I... I thought it was in your own best interest. I didn't want you to feel uncomfortable there, now that I'm in charge. So you decided to ban me? I apologize. It wasn't one of my best ideas. I should have spoken to you about it. Yeah, you should have. How did the gun become involved? Did you bring it with you to the building? No, that's the weird thing. I found it in Dad's stuff, which is now your stuff. That's something else I wanted to ask about. That's impossible. The police took the gun away with the... your father. I know they did, which is why I picked up the gun, to inspect it. And then what? And then Bernardo took Horatio and Feely back downstairs. Polonius and I... talked. About what? Personal stuff? Hamlet, now is not the time for- We argued, all right? We argued about his involvement in Dad's death. And then... Then I had the gun because I was taking it with me out of the office, and it just went off. It just went off in my hand, and it hit him dead center of the chest like I had aimed it and everything. But I was just holding it. I swear, I was just holding it. When I first picked it up, I checked, and it wasn't even loaded. There could have been a round in the chamber, but the safety was on! <laughs> oh, Hamlet. <laughs> it was an accident. And it doesn't look like it, I know, but I swear to God, I swear on Dad's grave, I did not go there to kill anybody. I didn't go there to even hurt anybody. I, I wanted answers, but instead I just got more, more of a mess. <sighs> Did you do it? Why did I... Mom, please. You've got to believe me. I may not have liked Polonius. I may have even been suspicious of him lately, but I'm not a killer. When you look at me, do you see someone capable of murder? 
Lately, when I look at you, I don't know what to think. Mom! Excuse me. Mom, wait! God! Oh my God! Does... Does Feely know? Does Feely know I killed her dad? I spoke with her brother, and he's aware of the broad strokes of the situation. He requested that he be the one to give Ophelia the news. I've got to talk to her. Please, Claudius, if you're on the level, you've got to let me do this one thing. Send me to jail. Send me to Siberia. But let me talk to Feely first. It... it needs to be me. It wasn't my intent, but it was still my fault. And she needs to know that. Please, it won't take long. No, Hamlet. What do you mean, no? This is extenuating circumstances. You've already dodged the police for me. What's one phone call? Your mother and I have talked, son, and we've agreed that- Don't call me son. I'm not your son. This is an incredibly serious situation you're in. Do you understand that? Of course I understand that. How could I not? Good. Then you'll also understand why Gertrude and I have made this decision. What decision? Instead of turning you over to the police, and instead of making this a criminal matter, we've admitted you to a psychiatric facility a few hours north of here. You're... you're committing me? Laertes has agreed not to press charges so long as you remain at the facility and cooperate with the doctors and their programs. I'm not insane, Claudius. You need help, Hamlet. You killed a man. By accident or not is irrelevant. You are out of control and losing touch with reality. I'm not insane. It's you. You're doing this! This is gaslighting! You're manipulating my mother! You're the one who had the gun in his office! Pack a bag. We leave within the hour. Swap A for M. B for... No. Numbers not working. The hell is an Alberti's disc? Could you knock that off? I'm trying to concentrate. So am I. Stop interrupting. You're spouting nonsense. I'm trying to figure out if the book is in code. That would explain why it looks so weird. Yeah, but you don't know anything about code breaking. You've just got Wikipedia open in front of you. Do you have a better idea? Yeah. Google Translate. And how's that simple approach working out for you? <sighs> Dog shit. Terrific. So we're both useless at this. What if we called the psychic place? She knew lots of weird stuff. Even if she can't read it, maybe some spirit or something can. She said she wasn't going to be able to help us more than she already had. Yeah, but what does she know? So far, kinda seems like nearly everything. I'm calling anyway. Here, I'll put it on speaker. Thank you for calling Player Queen Psychic and Tarot Readings. Unfortunately, we are now permanently closed due to my death. Did she say? Shh! If you are calling to schedule a psychic reading, I recommend contacting Gisela at Mystic Messages. She has a strong connection to the spirit world. For tarot readings, contact Marlene at Teachings of Tarot. If you are calling about a book you found written in a strange language, be sure to take ownership of the tome rather than wasting time attempting to decode it. You won't have any luck. If you're calling because you lost a pet... That was... That part about the book was for us, right? I think that part about the book was specifically for us. Unless there's a bunch of mysterious books popping up in town. She said to take ownership of it. How do you take ownership of a book? Write your name on it? Put your name in it, then. I don't want this thing to know me. Philly, it's a book. 
a really creepy stolen book. What am I supposed to say anyway? I, Ophelia, command you, book, to become mine, because I'm the one who found you, and now I make the rules? It's worth a try. Holy shit. What's holy shit? I don't like holy shit. The words are fucking moving. Wait, 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 wait. What are they saying now? Now it looks like Latin? Maybe Greek. Latin. I can do Latin. Took four years of it in high school. Gimme. Can you read it? Yeah, I can. I think, could it hear me? Did the ownership thing work? After the ghost, I'll believe anything. I'm looking for anything about a curse. Nolite maledictere here! What's it say? Something something weapon, blah blah blah. Those blahs could be important. I said I took Latin, not that I paid attention. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't give you a direct translation, but we've also got the words effectus, which you can probably guess means effect, cato, which is seed or submit, and over here on the next page we have convoco, convene, and capio in all capital letters. Look that one up, I don't remember. Way ahead of you. It means enthrall. Either I'm projecting all the weird shit happening around here, or this thing is a spell book. That's a big leap. Suspend your disbelief and think about it. Focus on the fact that ghosts are apparently a real thing. And then turn your thoughts on this book. Funky, leather-bound, hidden in Claudius' office. Changes languages when you talk to it. Knows when you talk to it. And then, when you shove together these words, we have affect, submit, convene, and enthrall. These are commands, Horatio. Which makes this a recipe book for commands. A spell book. You're starting to sound like Hamlet. He'd never make that logical jump. It's too weird. But with your special lesbian mind powers. Oh, don't flatter me like that. Speaking of Hamlet, where is he? We took Latin together, and I bet a lot of money he paid way more attention than I did. I bet he could puzzle this out a lot easier. I don't know where he's at. I've been texting him ever since we cracked open the book, but he hasn't come back to me. That's weird. Normally he's so on top of his notifications. Maybe he's in deep shit at home after raiding the office. Could be. Let me buzz Rosie, see if she can track him down. Rosie? His cousin. I remember, but... really? We've been texting! Sue me! Now shush, it's ringing. Ophelia! Hi! Rosie! Hey, babe, sorry to bother you. I just had a quick question. Babe? Blech. Sure, sure, go ahead. Everything okay over there? I'm just surprised to hear from you is all. With everything happening. What do you mean, with everything happening? I, oh, God, you, you didn't hear? Hear what? Rosie, you're freaking me out. Put her on speaker. Horatio's here too. Let me put you on speaker. I, well, I don't know how to say this gently, but it's Hamlet. Is he okay? He's not hurt or anything, is he? He's not hurt, no. But he's not... He's not well. I'm not supposed to tell this to anyone outside of the family, but you're his best friends. You... You promised you won't tell anyone, will you? That depends. Of course not. Rosie, what happened? Something... Something really bad happened. At the office. Nobody will tell me what, but my dad and Aunt Gertrude are checking him into Kensington Hospital up north. Kensington Hospital? Like, the asylum? It's an inpatient psychiatric facility. When are they leaving? We have to talk to him. We can help explain. They... they just left. Almost an hour ago. I'm so sorry, but he's already gone. Having any more luck with the book? 
I'm staggering along. The way I'm translating it, this passage could definitely be a curse. It could also be a lot of complaining, but based on the real life context clues, I kind of doubt. God damn it, Pierties. That's like the fifth time he's called and made me lose my place. Have you considered answering? Hell no, it's Laertes. And I can't turn it off in case Hamlet calls. Before you say anything, yes, I know it's a long shot. The girl's got hope. Do you think we're doing the right thing? By going to bust him out? Undoubtedly. Really? Not a single down? No. Honest to God, no. Explain. Claudius is a snake. I can see him shipping Hamlet off out of the way all too easily. Gertrude wasn't in any state to put up a fight last time I saw her, and who knows what she's like now. Claudius could have weaseled his way into her head all too easily. And Rosie said Hamlet was distraught and didn't want to go. He was committed against his will. And you trust what Rosie says. You like Rosie. I do like Rosie. Or, I guess, I'd like to like her. Once this is all over, and we know if she's on the up and up. But I think she is. I just have a gut feeling. So at least for now, I'm taking her at her word. You don't look reassured by any of this. Because I'm scared, Feely. We're working above our pay grade here. What if... What if we're not doing the right thing? What if we went along with Hamlet's suspicions and encouraged him and now he's had a break with reality? What if we helped break him? What if we're about to break him more? <sighs> That's a risk. And I'm trying not to think about it. But tell me this. Does driving up there to go get him feel right to you? Yes. Yes, it does. He's always been there for me. And now I can finally do something for him. Did I ever tell you how he and I met? I know the broad strokes, but that's about it. I backed into his car. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first day on the job, and I was trying to parallel park outside the office, and the family driver was dropping ham off out front of the building, and I misjudged and scrape ripped the fender right off his fucking limo. Oh my god! Yeah, sure, it's funny now. But think of me then. I hadn't even set foot inside my new job, let alone have a keycard, and here I was, mutilating the boss's ride. My grandma needed dialysis, and I needed the job to pay for it. I just earned her a death sentence. Freaking American healthcare. But? But, instead of reading me the riot act and firing me, Hamlet listened while I explained what happened. I was nervous, I was jittery, I was so unbelievably sorry, and I really needed this job. I was babbling, I told him the whole story, and you know what he did? That crazy man asked me what I was getting paid. It was something low, maybe ten bucks in an hour, and he said that just wouldn't do. He marched me inside and over to the front desk and announced the new hire would be getting a raise on the spot. Then he wandered off and... I thought that was the end of it. I was off the hook, but it got better. The next day I came home to find a bouquet of flowers in the front porch from my grandma, and there was this card attached, and inside was a check fat enough to cover dialysis five times over. Mind you, he'd already given me the raise to pay for it, but I guess he decided that just wasn't good enough. And sure, the guy has more money than God, but that's not the kind of thing you just see happen. How did you guys become friends then? If someone did something that dramatic for me, I wouldn't know how to be around them at all. Oh, I didn't. But I tracked him down the next day and offered the check back. When he said no, I said then I was going to buy him lunch. <laughs> he found that pretty funny, I guess, since it was kind of his own money, but hey, I had to do something. So we got lunch, and it wasn't horrible. It was actually really fun. I ended up inviting him to join my grandma and I for Jeopardy night, and the rest was history. 
And then he brought me. And then he brought you. He's the only person I know who can even come close to challenging my grandma Jeopardy. It's a latent superpower, I think. It has to be. So, thinking about how much he's done for me and how much we've been through together, I'm terrified I'm not going to be able to do for him what he did for me. Help make life livable. Show support. He's feeling... You and I are great friends. Best friends. But Hamlet... There's something special there. I'm gonna ask you a question, Horatio. You can totally plead the fifth on this, but it's begging to be asked. I think I'd be less of a friend if I didn't point this out. Shoot. Are you in love with Hamlet? Probably. Maybe. I don't know for sure, Feely. But I know that I'll do anything for him that I want to fix everything in his world that's gone wrong. And I always want to be around him, even when he's crabby and unbearable. Okay. It doesn't matter, anyway. He said he doesn't do romance. He isn't programmed like that, doesn't feel that. And I wouldn't want to pressure him. Still, when you figure out how you feel, I think you should tell him. Even if nothing comes of it, at least you will have shot your shot. You both deserve to have all the cards on the table. For now, let's just focus on the felony, okay? It's easier than the emotions. So this is what it's come to. I'm alone, abandoned... In an institution? <laughs> I'm institutionalized! My father would be so proud! But I suppose Mom will have to be proud for the both of them. So proud that she thinks I'm capable of cold-blooded murder! That I killed a man in a fit of rage! Ghost Dad. If you're still anywhere here, now would be a really great time for you to appear to me. I'm... I'm really alone. Mom is... She's just as gone as you are, I think. She'll believe anything Claudius says. It's like she barely even remembers you. I wonder if she'll marry him now to keep the money in the family. Is that legal? They're not blood-related, but it would be... The word appalling comes to mind. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. You were right. I should have left your death alone. But even though I know you were right, I still can't entirely bring myself to regret my actions. I will find your killer. I don't know how anymore, since I'm in here. I can start to guess what it will cost me. Nothing good will come of my revenge, but I can't stop. I... I think my heart is breaking. Either my heart or my mind. And there's not a damn thing I can do about it, either way. Lift me up. Just get your hands. Stop wiggling. I'm not wiggling. I'm cl- Ah! Not up my skirt, you freak. I'm sorry. It was an accident. If you'd stop moving around so much and just let me push you up. Then do that. Oh, hi there, Hamlet. Fancy seeing you here. Ophelia. What's shaking, Bacon? Help me get through this window. I think you guys can pull me up, too. Yeah. Put your arms up, brace your legs on the side, and we can totally do it. <sighs> Good thing they didn't put you on the top floor or something. What are you... How did you find me? How did you get here? What's going on? Rosie told us where they were taking you. We hopped on the road as soon as we found out. And you're never gonna believe what we learned about that book we stole. I messed with it the whole way up here and... Ophelia. Why are you calling me that? Ophelia, there's... Something I need to tell you. We can chat in the car, but we should bail before someone comes by and hears a bunch of people talking in here. No. This has to happen now. You might not... might not want to bring me with you after all once I say this. 
Emily, you're scaring me. Good. You should be scared. I'm... Something terrible happened. And I don't know for sure if it was related to the strange things happening lately or if it was just me. It might have been just me. You can tell us, Hamlet. You can trust us. But you might not trust me. Feely, your dad- Ah, oh Christ, did he help put you in here? I told him we went to the psychic, who's dead now, by the way, but it never occurred to me that he'd try and shuffle you out of the picture by saying you're crazy. I shot Polonius, Ophelia. I shot your father in the chest with the gun my father used to kill himself. He's dead. Ophelia, I killed your father. Hamlet, that's not funny. No, that's not. Feely. But that's not possible. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you kill my father? I didn't mean to. It was an accident. It was magic. It was... I can't understand it. It's... It's Laertes. I think you need to answer that. Hello? Ophelia, it's about goddamn time you answered your phone. Do you know how long I've been trying to get a hold of you? Yes. Where are you? You need to come home right now. I don't care where you are or what you're doing. This is a family emergency, not the business kind. Is, is everyone okay? No, Ophelia. It's Dad. Oh? He's been shot, Ophelia. Our father's dead. Feely, I am so, so sorry. Oh, God. Hamlet, no, I'm sorry. We... we screwed up. If we'd understood the book right away... What are you talking about? Why are you apologizing to me? <laughs> we translated the book, Hamlet. And we figured out the details of the curse that the player queen warned us about. It wasn't your father that was cursed. It was his gun. Claudius isn't using magic to control people. He's controlling the gun. And by leaving it for you to find... He took out Polonius and I in one action. His two greatest challengers gone. Polonius dead and me to blame for his murder. It wasn't your fault, Hamlet. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's his. Hey, Feely. What's up? Rosie, hi. I'm sorry to bother you again, but it's... Yeah, it's an emergency. For sure an emergency. What I'm gonna ask you is gonna sound absolutely insane. And you'd be right. But I have to ask. Okay. This... This has something to do with Hamlet, doesn't it? We just got a call from the hospital about a broken window, and... And they don't know where he is. I can't tell you anything about that. But I will say, I'm doing what I know is right. Can you deal with that? I'm giving you an out if you can't. I... I can deal with it. What do you need? This is the crazy part. I need you to find the gun. The one Mr. Prince used to kill himself, and... The one... the one that was used earlier today. Your dad has to have it. There's nowhere else it could have gone. You want me to steal a gun? I warned you it was crazy. And you can't tell me why. You're not... gonna hurt someone with it, are you? No. The opposite, in fact. I'm trying to make sure nobody gets hurt with it ever again. Then, I guess I have to help you. I'll find it. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Bring it to the cemetery. I'll be waiting by Mr. Prince's grave. Whatever you do, don't touch it. Cover your hand with a glove or a cloth or something. That part is really important. Promise me you won't touch it. I promise. And I'll be there.
are you two absolutely sure about this? This is drastic. You're positive on the translation. Yes. If we can get the gun and lay it to rest beside its first victim, we can end the curse. That means we need to unbury my father. But it's grave robbing. It's not robbing if we don't take anything. We're adding something. Now, less talking, more digging. All right. Get down. Car. Shit, shit. They're coming over here. Shut up. They're going to hear you. Feely? That's Rosie. She came. Boost me out of this hole. You said to meet you here, and I brought the... I brought it, but... Rosie! Ah! Shh, shh, shh. Someone's gonna hear you. I... Oh my god, are you digging up Mr. Prince? It's... not... what it looks like. It's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Hamlet and Horatio are here too. I probably should have said. Sorry. Did you bring it? The... The gun? I have it, right here. Take it. I don't... want it. Is that a Ziploc bag it's in? Feely said not to touch it, so... It's a perfect solution. Thank you, Rosie. You have no idea. And I don't want to. I'm... I'm glad I could help. I think. But this is as far as I go. I don't want to know anything else. Do what you have to do, but... I can't help you dig up a grave. I understand. You've already done enough. But I have to ask you one last favor. What is it? Don't tell anyone you were here, or that you saw us, or even heard from us. I know you're not going to want that, but it's important. We have to finish this. H how long do you need? Give us until morning. Can you do that? Yes. Thank you. I'm leaving now. Before Julia and my dad swing by the hotel and realize I'm gone, Good luck, I think. Here's hoping we can say her a word. How far down are you guys now? Four and a half, five feet. You'll go faster if you kept helping. Right. Make room. Stop. I hit something. Phoebe, start brushing the dirt to the sides. We're down far enough. Horatio, help me work on getting this coffin lit up. Are you sure you want to open it? It's your dad. And even with embalming and stuff, a body doesn't last forever. I know if it was my family member, I wouldn't want to see that. I don't think it matters much what I want anymore. This has become about stopping Claudius, not just my personal revenge. The book said lay it to rest beside the first victim, not just throw it in the hole. If we have to do this at all, we ought to at least do it right. Besides, I've already seen his body and his ghost. Whatever's in the box isn't him anymore. I can take it. I just wanted to make sure. Feely, hop out. We're opening it. Gladly. Feely, could you pass me the gun? Here. Careful. I open the bag. Is that it? We just have to place it in the casket? There's no incantation or anything? We don't have to... Chant? That's it. Should we close it back up? 
It's strange, isn't it? The urge to preserve the bodies of our relatives. It's more morbid than the actual death itself, I'm starting to think. Death is one thing, but it's because we preserved and buried him that I'm staring at my own father's open skull right now. Do you see it? Wet bone in the rain. It's, I should say, horrific. And yet it's still my father. I still have an emotional attachment to these bones in the mud. I look at this scene out of a horror movie, and instead of being disgusted, I remember what the bones used to be. How much I loved what these bones were a part of. I look at this corpse, and I feel love. (laughs) Isn't that sick? I think we are sick, Hamlet. Sick and fucked up and trying to do the right thing. We should close it, Hamlet. You're right. This needs to be over. Ready to start filling it in? No, but we should do it anyway. You guys start. Got my shovel handle all muddy, climbing out, and it's slipping everywhere. Go rinse it off in the creek over there and be right back. Don't let anyone see you. No shit. What are you gonna do now, man? Once we fill in his grave? It's not like I can go home, can I? My mother and Claudius had me committed. I won't go back to Kensington, since you've already gone through the effort of breaking me out. I can't retreat to the offices, since I'm banned from the premises. I can't plead sanctuary from my father's associates. They all probably know I killed Polonius by now. I don't know what I'm going to do, Horatio. You can crash at my place as long as you want. You know that, right? I can't do that either. It's way too close to Claudius, and it would paint a huge target on you and your grandmother. I couldn't live with myself if I was the reason Claudius went after your family. If he was going to, he probably would have already. But I see where you're coming from. I'll figure something out. I always do. Feely's been gone a pretty long time just for rinsing off a shovel handle. That creek's not that far. Maybe digging up a grave got to her. She was pretty gung-ho about it up until now. You'd think filling it back in would be the easy part. You would. Do you think- That was Feely! Run! Feely! Feely, where are you? There! In the water! Help me get her out! Christ! She was face down. There's gotta be water in her lungs. Feely! Feely! What happened? Hamlet, she's not breathing. No, 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 she has to be breathing. It's... it's Feely! She's got to be... Get out of the way! She needs CPR! Call an ambulance! But the grave... Forget about the grave! Call 911! No, you're right. Come on, Feely, you got this. One, two, three, four, five. Two breaths. One, two... I need an ambulance at King's Cemetery. My friend, my girlfriend fell in the creek and she's not breathing. She's not breathing. Oh, God, please. Please, we need help. No! Julia! Hi! You surprised me. Didn't think I would be back. It's not that, I just... Where were you? Dad asked you to stay here, but when we got back, you were nowhere to be found. The car was gone, and now you're dripping wet. I... went to get coffee. Okay. Where's the coffee, then? I didn't think so. What did you give her, then? Ophelia, of course. That's who you went to see, isn't it? Did you help her and Hamlet with their little investigation? You did, didn't you? I can see it written all over your face. Please, Julia, don't tell Dad. It was just one little thing. Of course I'm going to tell Dad. 
You know how hard he's worked for this. And here you go threatening to screw it all up. Julie, I'm sorry. I was just trying to... What are you doing? Are those spell candles? Dad's busy right now. So I'm fixing your mess. Julia, you don't have to do this. And you didn't have to turn on us. You made your choice, and I'm making mine. Are you going to cooperate, or do I have to lock you in the bathroom? I'll... I'll cooperate. (sighs) Good. But if you hurt her, if you kill her... I don't think I can forgive you for that. Are you kidding me? You met this girl a week ago. I'm your sister. I know you are, but you've changed lately. You're different. I've learned how to make the hard decisions, Rosie. And it's time you did, too. Feely, if you can hear me, please wake up. I know you're in there somewhere, and I hope you can hear me. We need you to come back. I need you to come back. We're so close, so close to avenging my father, but none of it will be worth it if I lose you. Other than my parents, you're the person I've known the longest in the whole world. And in that whole time, I don't think there's been a time when we weren't best friends. Most people, they cycle through friends as people move in and out of their lives. But you were never part of a cycle. You're part of my always. A constant... And and you're the only constant I have left. You can't leave like this. I won't let you. I can't let it be my fault. Oh, look at me making this about myself. I should be reminding you that you deserve better. You have so much life left to live. What about Rosie? You've just gotten to know her. You need to see that through. You can break free of Laertes. Do whatever you want. Do anything other than die an undeserved, muddy death. How is she? No change. Not even a blip on the monitor to suggest she hears me. Is that coffee? Yeah, you're here. Figured we could use it. The doctor been by? No, but the nurse has. He tried to kick me out since I wasn't family, and also covered head to toe in mud. I got some odd looks myself. What did you tell him? That coma patients are far more likely to recover if they have outside stimulation to drive them back, and if he kicked me out and Feely didn't recover, that would be on his conscience. Jesus. It worked, didn't it? Yeah. Something, something desperate times, I suppose. I'd be hard-pressed to think of a time I felt more desperate. At least when my father died, it wasn't drawn out. By the time I knew what was going on, it was too late for me to do anything. Now, though, I feel like I need to be doing something, should be able to help. But all I can do is sit here and keep talking, like every other day of my life. You'd think I'd be able to do better than that for her. There's nothing you can do. You did all you can. Helped pull her out the creek, got her here to the hospital. You've given her all the help you possibly can. She'll be back. She's feely. She'd never let some punk-ass creek take her out. That's exactly what she'd call it, too. Look, Hamlet, there's something I need to say. We've been friends for how long now? Five years more? And this whole time you've been so good to me. Feely, too. You're a really special guy. And this might be out of line, but I thought you deserved to know. You? What the hell do you think you're doing here? God, I always thought you were scum. But it takes some nerve to sit at the bedside of someone you just tried to kill. Here to finish the job. Dude, I know you're upset, but Jesus Christ, this is still a hospital and people are- It's alright, Horatio. He deserves to make a scene if he wants to. Don't patronize me. I'm not. At least, that's not my intent. I can't help how you take my words. But you have every right to be angry with me. As far as you know, I'm a killer. Maybe even a serial offender. You killed my father and tried to kill my sister. I'll say you're a serial offender. 
If you'd calm down for a second, we could explain everything to you. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes these past few days. Hell, probably way longer than that. You shut your fucking mouth! I have no interest in you, besides seeing you in a cell alongside Hamlet as his accomplice. I'm not an accomplice! Like hell! Both of you, stop! <clears throat> Horatio, are you- I'm fine. You're bleeding. Laertes, you goddamn son of a bitch! I'm going to fucking kill you for what you did! You, Hamlet, for my father. And you, you bastard, for helping him! What about your sister? I thought you were upset about her a second ago. You, stay away from her from now on. I won't have her running around as your little whore. Feely is not- <clears throat> She's my responsibility, and I can say what I like. We're done with you, Hamlet. You've ruined yourself. Your company is no longer yours. Your family despises you, and you've lost your girlfriend. Guys, stop it. Look! Any hope you had of redeeming yourself from my family's dying through her is gone. I won't have her married to a killer and an insane freak. She's waking up! Guys... I'm here, Ophelia. Give me one moment and I'll have these ruffians escorted out by security. Hamlet? That's right. You don't have to deal with him in your life anymore. You can find a new suitor. One more appropriate who has all your interests at heart. Laertes, I... Yes? What is it? I'm so... Fucking gay. <laughs> You're... I'm sorry? I said I'm so fucking gay. God, I'm the one waking up in the hospital and you're still slower. But you're dating Hamlet. Everyone's been expecting him to propose to you. Hamlet agreed to date me to get you and Dad off my back. As for the proposal rumors, it's not my fault. People just started saying it. So, you were using him? Only you would say it that way. Hamlet was helping me. Because he's my friend. He's also the reason that she's still breathing. He's the one who called the ambulance. Ophelia, you're not thinking straight. Never am, actually. Because I'm gay. Hamlet, kill your father. I told you myself, and you're still calling him a friend? Like we told you, there's a lot more to what's been going on than you know. Shut up! And Ophelia, are you actually siding with these murderers over your own family? Over father? Over me? They've treated me more like family than you ever have. I see. That's how it's going to be then? Yes. I... I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You always did attach yourself to whoever offered you the most. Laertes. Me? Father? Now Hamlet. You take and you take. And what have you ever given in return? Nothing! You've never earned a thing in your life. I should be glad I don't have to deal with that anymore. You're setting me free. How dare you talk to her like that, you piece of- No, let him finish. I want to finally know what he really thinks of me. Come on, Laertes. Let's have the rest. How much do you hate me? How jealous are you that I have friends like these to fall back on when you've always been alone? You're a waste of time and money, Ophelia. A bottom feeder and a drain on the family. I hope you have fun with your little friends. Now that you don't have a family, you'll still have them. A disgraced son and criminal. And his servant. Are you done? No, far from it. I said it once, but I don't think you believed me. I'm going to kill you, Hamlet, for what you've cost me. As soon as you're out of this hospital, you're mine. You're going to die. We'll see if my sister regrets her decisions then. Get out. Scared? I said fucking get out! See you soon, Hamlet. Horatio. Feely. Are you okay? I'm awake, aren't I? I meant emotionally. That was... A lot. The casual condescension and latent disdain I'm used to. But hearing it all out loud... You deserve better than him. I already have better. But no pressure, right? <laughs> 
What are you going to do now? Whatever I have to. I'm going to end this. No matter what Claudius makes me do to get there. How are you even going to get to him? You heard Laertes. He's going to be waiting for you the second you're out of the building. There's one thing we could do. Hamlet, give me your jacket. What's that going to accomplish? Oh. Oh, no. If we swap coats and leave at the same time, Laertes won't know which one of us to follow. We're about the same height, and if we cover our hair... Absolutely not. Laertes could just as easily kill you as a consolation prize once he realizes what we did. Pretty sure I'm stronger than him. What about me? I could start the fight again, distract him. Feely, you're in the hospital for a reason. You almost died. You could still have water in your lungs. This is serious, though. You're not leaving without a doctor's approval. And if you try to sneak out, I'll bring you right back in. I hate how much you mean that. Even if you do confront Claudius, what are you going to do? I don't want to answer that. Hamlet. Everyone already thinks I'm a murderer. Why not prove them right? Because you'd be throwing your life away. I'm almost certain I've already done that. But I'll make it a last resort. If I can talk Claudius down, if I can chase him out of town, I'll do it. I will kill him if I have to. I understand if you don't want to help me with that. We've come this far. Might as well finish the job. If... If I don't see you again after this... We know. We love you too. Thank you. Now go get your revenge. Welcome home, Hamlet. Have a good time at the mental hospital? No? You escaped? What did you do then? Oh, just a bit of light grave robbing. <laughs> I can't possibly expect this to go well. And yet... Hello, Hamlet. You got here pretty quick. We thought it would be upwards of an hour, yet. Well, that answers one of my questions. You've sided with your father, I see. Why wouldn't I? I suppose I thought we shared some common ground. You know, before we met, Claudius told me you'd just lost your mother. I thought that might give you a modicum of sympathy. <laughs> Dad wasn't kidding. You people really will believe anything. Wow, I told him I thought that was laying it on too thick, that you'd see straight through it, but <laughs> I guess not. So, you lied about that too. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. Is Rosie in on this too, then? Did she lead us to the cemetery so you could try to kill Feely? It didn't work. She's tougher than she looks. <sighs> oh well, practice makes perfect. And to answer your question, no, Rosie didn't lead you there. Killing your friend was an attempt to make the best of a bad situation when my sister decided she didn't want to play her part. <sighs> She's currently warming a closet upstairs, thinking about her actions and all that. Speaking of your actions, I'm assuming you know why I'm here. You probably think you're here to save the day. Reclaim your place as man of the family, run my father out of town, and become a hero. Is that about right? I'm not trying to be a hero. I'll be whatever it takes to get the job done. Oh, so that is where the gun got to. You know it's cursed, don't you? It spent some time laid to rest beside my father. I stopped by the cemetery to retrieve it before I came here. But in the event that didn't work, it just means I can't miss when I shoot, right? Won't you come inside, Hamlet? It's my house, so yes, I will. Where is he? Who? Your father, Claudius. Whereabout is he slithering currently? The kitchen. Lead the way. Julia, who was at the door? Me. Ah, hello, Hamlet. We were waiting for you to get here. Please, take a seat. No, I'm not here for any more posturing. In fact, right now, I have a gun pressed into your daughter's back. And if you don't get out of my house and stay away from my mother, I'm going to use it. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Hamlet. You don't expect me to believe that you would pull the trigger on your own, do you? After the fuss you made after the incident with Polonius? So that was you. I'm not the one who killed him. It was your hand. You shot the gun. But I'm not the murderer. No. Dad. Yes, of course. Hamlet, drop the gun, or I will respond in kind. You're in no position to make that demand. Ah, you're right. Gertrude, would you please come here? Yes, Claudius. Gertrude, if you would be so kind, go over to that knife block and pick a knife. Certainly. Mom? Mom, what are you doing? How's this one? Perfect. Now, hold it to your throat. No! Mom, snap out of it! Mom, can you hear me? Mom, what the hell did you do to her? Only what you have required me to do. Would you consider releasing Julian now? I... fine. I'll hold that gun for you too. Wouldn't want it going off. I can't believe you brought it with you. Never bring any weapon to a fight unless you want it used against you. Maybe I'm ready to die. If you were, you wouldn't have gone to such great lengths to come back here and confront me. You still want revenge. If I have to die to get it, so be it. Maybe you'd give yourself up. But what about Gertrude? Would you sacrifice your mother to avenge your father? That would leave you with quite the conundrum. There'd be no avenging her beyond punishing yourself. If you've demonstrated one thing about yourself in the short time I've known you, Hamlet, it's that you must always find someone to blame. You couldn't accept your father's death was suicide. Someone had to be responsible. You couldn't admit to killing Polonius. It was my fault. And here, now, you won't put yourself at fault for the death of your mother. You act like it's a bad thing that I'm not willing to make myself a murderer. But you would be if you still had that gun, wouldn't you? You would shoot me dead if I wasn't able to slit your mother's throat quicker than the bullet could kill me. I won't deny that I came here to kill you. I still aim to do it. With a gun pointed at your heart and a knife at your mother's throat? I doubt it. You've got quite the little servant in your daughter, Claudius. The other one didn't train up so well, did she? Rosie will be back on track shortly, I'm sure. What now then, Claudius? You have me at your mercy! What hole will you dump me in this time? Another hospital? My grave? I'm in favor of the grave at this point. You know far too much, and you're too strong-willed to extend a thrall over, at least if I wanted it to be an effective one, like I have over your mother. She was more than amenable to my control, as depressed as she was. It was like, what's the phrase? Taking candy from a baby? What was that? I believe, yes. Things have just gotten significantly more interesting. We're in the kitchen, if you'd care to join us. Horatio! Laertes, you bastard! Let him go! He's choking! That's kind of the point of a chokehold! Isn't it, Hamlet? I swear to God! Uh -uh. No moving. Stay right where you are. Uh, Hamlet, I'm sorry. I tried to run, but he's... He's deranged. Oh, I'm deranged? I'm not the one who killed people. According to who? Like I said, unstable people are markedly easier to control. Let Horatio go. He has nothing to do with this. Let him and my mother walk out of here and I'll give you no more trouble. Tempting, but I don't trust the offer. I have a better idea. Let's see who survives, you or Laertes. And then work from there. Laertes, try to kill my nephew, please. It would be my pleasure. Laertes, stop. 
We've already done this once at the hospital, and your sister chose me over you. There's nothing to be gained by beating me now. Our business together is over. It is not over. It won't be over until you're as dead as you made my father. Don't make me hurt you. You don't last half a minute without your servant backing you up. Or Ophelia fighting your battles. I should have known I'd have to take him down before coming after you. Foolishness on my part. <laughs> Too much talking, not enough killing. Can I use a knife? You can use whatever you want, so long as you get the job done. If you see my father in the afterlife, tell him I'm the one who sent you to him. As a gift, so he can get his own revenge for what you did. Goodbye, Hamlet. <laughs> Horatio! Christ, that's a lot of blood. Horatio, move! She's got a gun! <laughs> Horatio! Outside interference was not part of the plan, Hamlet. That is cheating. I think that informs my decision on what comes next. Gertrude, go ahead and... What on earth? Hello, Claudius. Son. Dad! You have no place here anymore. I've already beaten you. Get out. And let you destroy my family. Claudius, if you would just talk to me, you could have been a part of it. None of this had to happen, don't you see that? Of course it didn't have to happen. You're the one who doesn't understand. Explain it to me then. I wanted it to happen. I loved you once, even when you failed and took advantage of our parents' kindness. I can see that the person you used to be, willing to try and ambitious, has rotted away to this. Now you threaten everything I still do love, and I can't let you have that. You can't have anything else but my life. And what could you possibly do about it? Hamlet, I told you to let my death go and save yourself. You did. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I only wanted you to find peace. Find it now, whatever that means to you. I can't help you for long. Help me? Move now. Take the gun. End this. You're forgetting that... Wait... What are you doing to me? Why can't I move? Now, Hamlet. Ah! 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 No! Hamlet, you wouldn't doom your mother. But I doom you. Gertrude, now! Mom! No! Mom! Mom! Come on, don't do this! I need you! You're the only family I have left! You can't! Move over. Let me help keep pressure. Horatio, you're... You're... Shoulder hit. I'll be fine. You hear that, Mom? Horatio's gonna be fine. You'll be fine too, you... Hamlet. Yeah, Mom. I'm here. I've got you. Gun. Murderer. Murderer. Mom, come on. Come on. Tell me how I'm a murderer. Mom. Hamlet. <laughs> you win, but not without a price tag. Dad, don't talk. Keep pressure on it. Keep... Oh, oh God. Dad. So that's it then. You won. Julia, just get out. And what do you think, Hamlet? Do you want to make the same choice as your father and set me loose upon the world to ruminate on all you've taken from me? <gasps> Julia! How did you get out? Julia is dead. He's dead. Hamlet killed him. Please. Let's just leave. I can forgive you. You're my sister. I- I love you. 
We can leave all of this behind us. No one has to lose anyone else. What do you think about that idea, Hamlet? Just go. Bad call. Sorry, Rosie. You picked your side, and I picked mine. No, I am picking a side now. Your side. Please, Julia. Unlike my father, I don't intend to wait to take my revenge. Don't be sad, Hamlet. You'll be back with your mother and father in just a minute. Horatio. Now it's over. Come back. Come back, please. Julie, you can't leave me all alone. You just shot her. She... What do we do now? What do I do now, you mean? No, I'm just as in on this as you are. I killed Laertes. I just saw Julia. I'm already on the hook for killing Polonius. There's no reason for you to throw your life away as well. That's completely out of the question. Please, just let me do this for you. One last thing, and then it can finally be over. You go to jail! I'm not going to jail, Horatio. Then... You're not going to- I'm not going to kill myself, but I am going to choose my own ending. Horatio, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Of course I came. How are you feeling after leaving the hospital? Oh, better? I'm still a little wheezy now and again, but I finished my antibiotics last night. Who knows what was in that damn creek, so the doctors had me in some pretty heavy-duty stuff. In case I inhaled corpse water, I guess. Lovely thought. Not the worst thing that's happened recently. What about you, though? How's your shoulder? It'll be fine. Once the ER stitched me up, I've been mostly fine. Not to say it doesn't hurt like a bitch, though. Wearing this sling makes life harder, but it's better than tearing my stitches. Just the thought of that makes me want to vomit. But we're stalling, aren't we? You didn't ask me here for small talk. You're right. I came here with an agenda. But we can stall a little more if you want. Better to get it over with, I think. All right. Then, tell me, what the hell happened? It's plastered all over the news, but you were actually there. Rosie won't talk about it at all. Please tell me Hamlet didn't kill all those people. It was more complicated than the news could ever know. Hamlet killed Claudius. That's it. Then how... It was a bloodbath, Horatio. How did that happen if not Hamlet? Was it Claudius? <sighs> Claudius killed Gertrude. He had some kind of control over her. Made her hold a knife to her own neck. He made her cut her own throat when Hamlet shot him. Jesus. And... And my brother? Did Claudius kill him too? No. It was. I did. I killed Laertes. Oh. Do you want context? I think so. Yes, please. After Hamlet and I switched jackets and left the hospital, Laertes followed me for a few blocks when suddenly he jumped me. He ripped my hood off and started screaming about how I was a liar. I'm a strong guy, but Laertes... He was out of his mind. Had nothing to lose. He choked me out and dragged me back to the prince house with Claudius and Gertrude and Hamlet and all. Claudius told him to kill Hamlet and... He listened. Tried his best to do it. What happened then? He picked up a knife. He had the upper hand and was going to stab Hamlet, so... 
I broke a wine bottle over his head. A full one. I hoped it wouldn't kill him, but I knew it might. And it did. Feely, I am so- Don't apologize. It was him or Hamlet. He made the choice you had to make. Are you okay? No. But I'm not angry with you. I killed Julia, too. She swore vengeance on Hamlet after he killed Claudius, and I picked up the gun and shot her in the chest. That one. That one was cold-blooded. Does Rosie know? She was right there. Asking Julia to leave with her and all of this behind them. Julia couldn't. Kind of like Hamlet. I feel guilty every second. But I don't regret it. Jesus. Are you and Rosie really going to try and make a go off it? That's the plan. Right now, anyway. We're both pretty messed up, to say the least. Both our families wiped out in the same few days. It's not the stuff solid, healthy relationships are built on. But neither of us want to be alone right now. Want to bring her to Jeopardy? That would be nice. But I should tell you, I don't know how long we're going to stay here. Rosie should tactically inherit whatever Claudius had, and maybe the prince's estate too, but... She has her mom's last name on her birth certificate. She's Rosie Macbeth, not Rosie Prince. Legally, it's a goddamn nightmare. It'll be all tied up for months, if not years. She's planning on going to stay with her mom, and she asked me to go with her. Oh. You're moving away. I'm not taking furniture or anything. Not buying a house someplace else. But I'm leaving. At least for now. I don't know if it's permanent. I just need space, I guess. From all the insanity that's gone down. I get that. I'll miss you, though. I'd miss me, too. But maybe you'll keep busy. Won't have to suffer too much. Busy with what? Denmark Incorporated is shut down until they can find someone still alive enough to take it over. That kinda has to do with another part of why I wanted to talk to you. Remember what I told you that night in the garage before we saw the ghost? That you wanted stronger alcohol? No, the... the thing with my family. We talked about what a mess my home life was, and I told you that if my father and brother dropped dead, you were welcome to the fortune. Feely. Let me finish, even though you know where I'm going. I don't want an argument. I've waited my whole life to be free of my father and Laertes' control, and I finally have that. I won't be bogged down into living their life of corporate bullshit. Money isn't going to hold you back in life. I kept enough to support myself, at least long enough to establish myself independently. But everything else... I talked to Marcellus this morning, and she's finalizing the paperwork to put your name on the deed to the house... Titles to the cars, everything. It's yours now. It'll take a little time to get it set up, right? But in the meantime, this is the biggest check I could legally write you. Feely, this is... This is insane. This is more money than I've ever seen in one place in my life. I don't need charity, if that's what you're getting at. It's not charity. It's an investment. I do nothing with the money but spend it and complain about maintaining the accounts. You, though, you have ideas and ambitions and, most importantly, morals. I can't think of a better person to make rich. Go buy Denmark Inc. if that's what you want. Rebuild it. Make it amazing. The world needs more kind businessmen. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just cash the check. If you're sure that's what you want. I'm positive. The company was going to be Hamlet's legacy. But that ship has sailed, to say the least. Make it your legacy. Make him proud. I don't even know where to start. Talk to Marcellus. I swear, that woman knows everything about this stuff. 
She'll set you on your way. <sighs> Don't get me wrong, I'm incredibly grateful, but I just wish it didn't have to be this way. I want things back the way they were. You, me, Hamlet, ride or die. Now it's going to be just me. I'm not dropping out of your life. I'll always be there to bother you. <laughs> and Hamlet is out there somewhere. I know he'd be rooting for you. Maybe not me as much since I'm dating one of Claudius's spawn, but still, wherever he is, he's still our friend. Maybe on a boat racing towards Venezuela. Venezuela? No extradition. Ah, of course. Wherever he is, though, I'm sure he'll be on his way up before long. Even starting from scratch, he's smart enough to own whatever beach he lands on within a few months. A beach. I like that. Waves. Seagulls. Sun. It sounds peaceful. It's high time he got some peace. Dear Horatio and Ophelia, I don't know when or if I'll be able to send this letter to you, but I'm writing it as I head out to international waters. I can't tell you where I'm going, or even how long the trip will be. You've been through enough, and I won't make you any more complicit in my escape than you already are. I always knew I'd end up a big name in the papers, but I always assumed it would be related to the company, not a rash of murders. Feely, I hope you make a full recovery and are able to move past the loss of your father and brother. You deserve the world. And while I don't necessarily approve, I hope you find happiness with my cousin if you two decide to be together. Thank you for everything. For being my friend since we were both in diapers. For always encouraging me. And for standing by me when it looked like I'd lost my mind. Horatio, I also wish you a speedy recovery. I won't waste time going on about how it was my fault for dragging you into things. I know you'd tell me to shut up about it. Feely told me what her plan for her father's estate is, and I support it wholeheartedly. You're an amazing man, Horatio, and you deserve every ounce of success I know is about to come your way. I think I know what you were going to say to me at the hospital. I might be wrong, but if you know what I'm talking about, I feel the same. At least, my version of the same. You're special, to me and to the entire world. Someday, if you get sick of corporate life, come find me. I love you both so dearly and differently from everyone else in my life. I hope someday we can see each other again. Until then... I remain yours, Hamlet Prince. <laughs>